Greetings and welcome once again to another episode of the Retro Redoctopus Cephalop Podcast. And with me, as always, I have my pixelated cohorts, Parasite Steve. Hey, how's it going? I'm and Parasite. Ape and Alchemy. Hey, how are we doing, everybody? And today we have ourselves a, a special prisoner that we have locked up in our brig. <laughs> and uh, this prisoner is a designer, illustrator, and fabricator, Paul E. Niemeyer. <laughs> uh, am I saying your name name right? N- Niemeyer. N- yeah. Niemeyer. Okay. Niemeyer. Just, just Niemeyer. Yeah. yeah. Niemeyer. Perfect. Well, I think I get the E in there because no whole the whole pen thing. Right. I, Paul yeah, E. Well, Niemeyer. P E N. Yeah. For yeah. years, for years after, um, uh, uh, oh, I can't think. Animal House. After Animal House, uh, it was always Niedermeyer. No, it's oh, just right. Niedermeyer, man. Right. You're like, I'm not <laughs> Niedermeyer. Get the D out of there. Okay, Niedermeyer. Right. Oh, no. I'm just okay, forget it. <laughs> Hopefully that'll pain, man, wear uh, away soon enough. <laughs> feel your pain, man. Uh, Tim and I are actually brothers, and our last name is Krikorian. Guess who Guess who we forever were after the age? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all doctors now. <laughs> Which I guess you're, sometimes you're a doctor, you're a doctor alchemist, <laughs> right? I don't get it. Why do people say that? I don't get it. Mm. You won't be laughing when I turn that lead to gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I use the lead that. on you first to poison you, and then I'm gonna turn it to gold. Yeah. You're turn that over little pieces death? really fast, right? <laughs> little piece. I just love it. Is your dad doctor? Dr. Death, and I'm like, no, he's my <laughs> uncle. Right. <laughs> uncle Death, we call him. <laughs> All right. So, welcome to the break, Paul. We are so happy to have you here. Um, also, I want to give a special shout out to uh, Tim Wolf for introducing us to you on our Facebook page. I think that's yeah. really awesome of him to, Absolutely. to do that. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. Really, yeah, really thanks, cool Tim. guy. I talk to him all the time. He's, he's super cool. Yeah. Thanks a bunch, um, Tim. So, I want to know how you've been doing during these times and tell us about yourself. Oh, okay. Well, um, I gotta tell you, I, I've been freelancing for oh my God, 36 years since, wow. <laughs> since I lost my job at Bell. Oh, wait, since I was laid off at Bell. Should I stop waiting for that phone call? I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah, 36 <laughs> years. So, I mean, I, I work at home all the time. I'm used to that. Quite honestly, if uh, my wife wasn't a nurse and kept telling me there's a pandemic going on outside, I wouldn't even know. Uh, my, my life has not really changed that much. So. Right. I'll, I'll go days without leaving the house anyway. <laughs> You're like, it's just a Tuesday. It's just another day. I'm going out for week. food shopping once a week anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. these people whining. I haven't been on the day. <laughs> oh, please. I haven't been out of the house in over 30 years. What are you whining about? <laughs> I haven't seen the sun since I don't know when. No kidding. What is uh, the sun? I don't know. Uh, Vitamin D? Who needs it? Well, uh, they got pills James, for that anyways, right? Doomsday, bu- you know, doomsday preppers hunkering down in the bunker, you know. You couldn't last a week and a half, for Christ's sake, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fabricating giant treasure chests and doors and portcullises out of foam with a chainsaw you know it's typical tuesday night right. yeah 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 kind of well that's the thing well you can see my this is my studio behind me and uh, i've got you know it's a, uh, my civil war map that's an actual painting it's one big painting wow, wow. Nice. Back, what what was i thinking really back in the oh, day you did that. On computers uh, uh, just painted everything it was all hand painted you know? nice wow. Wow. Yeah, wow that was nuts um I saw, I saw online actually you said you did you do a lot of uh, you've done a lot of paintings uh, of uh, I mean a lot of maps you've done yes. like video game maps and all sorts of stuff with maps right yeah yeah I'm just kind of fascinated with them I always was I don't know why I just just kind of like maps and, yeah know. me too man I've I always had this weird fascination with old maps like I know they're, 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 they're like cool something not really cool but yeah. I've actually I, I've, I've got some old oh you, you'd love this <laughs> I've got some old uh, trench maps from world war one wow yeah wow. like like what an officer would have and they're and they're weird because they're like have their cloth and then they're like little boards um laminated into the cloth so it all folds up but it awful wow. I mean, and, and it all fold up. it's like enormous but it can fold up into a little little thing so an officer could keep it in his 
I got two of that them. is so cool. cool but yeah, it's got yeah, enough yeah. like rigid structure to it that it doesn't get all crumpled right right you know, wow. so, so when you when you unfold it was really kind of brilliant that is you know, really that, cool and that is from world war one and the cotton still held up it's not like falling apart oh. pretty they were really good they, I, I collected uh, military memorabilia for a long time. You can see the, the guns behind me. They're real. But the, uh, the rifle, the rifle musket back here is 1863 Springfield. And those are some Navy Colts up there. Where the hell they are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, the show is called Retro Redox Bus, and that is pretty fucking retro. We like all stuff. How retro is that? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's yeah, very retro, yeah. 18, 1860s. That's really <laughs> that's retro. Yeah. <laughs> that's retro. about as retro yeah. as you go. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging in here. We're, we're doing great. Uh, my wife is a nurse, so, you know, she's at the Tell hospital. her thank you from the show. We all appreciate yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you so oh, much for your service. And yeah, everything. yeah, she she's awesome. She really is. Uh, you know, so nice. but we we follow protocol. When she gets home, she means she goes makes a beeline for the washer. Everything goes in there. She makes a beeline for the shower, and you know, so we're staying Good. nice and happy and healthy, and you know, yeah, all you can do. Can. Yeah, all you can do, right? Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So, awesome. So well, let's get into the questions. Yeah. So the first one will be from Tim Wolf. I figure you know he can be the first one. Uh, so I'll ask on his behalf, what got you into art and what are some of your earliest influences? Wow. Okay. Um, well, I, I was always into art. I remember, uh, <laughs> I remember actually in kindergarten when the teacher would walk around and go, and what do you want to be? I want to be a policeman. I want to be a jet pilot. I want to be a dentist. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay in my house for over 30 years. <laughs> the Island of Misfit Toys. I got yeah. it. I know, yeah. I know All right. Going. He gets yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Here, here, here. Yeah, here. A, a Misfits that came out of that. Yeah. Oh, wow. was, for the Misfits. Yeah. And look at the skull. kind of misfit yeah. 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 I just noticed that it says, I just noticed it says Abyss where the... On the bottom of the skull, to too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Abyss was... A, it's a... Yeah, that is so cool. I, I want was, that shirt. Actually. Wasn't I clever? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, obviously it was very uh, clever. <laughs> you, you know it's what I called me a riff on the uh, the Misfits, the band too. Are, are you a metalhead? I or used a punk to be. Head? Used to I be a metalhead. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm like like an avant-garde jazz uh, <laughs> progressive guy. Nice. <laughs> yeah. My wife. Uh, listening, listening, listening to some Yes and yeah, some yeah. Kansas. You know, I always get it. <laughs> right, right, and, and actually, I I, I I delve into some weird shit. Like, uh, uh, ever heard of Steve Tibbetts or um, uh, Michael Hedges or those those guys? I've heard so, t- I've heard of Tibbetts. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard. Of him, listen yeah. to him. Yeah. He's he's a he's an interesting recluse of a eccentric. Um, he will take off a, like maybe five or six years and just disappear, and then he'll show up again and say, "Oh yeah, I've been hiking through Asia." Uh, <laughs> and I made and I made this so, jazz. I mean, that's and, all, and, made, really. right, and I brought all these sounds back and I found these indigenous people and these these instruments and you know, and he weaves it into the. I, well, I love Steve Tibbetts. I just you know, <laughs> cool. Just, no, you know, I gotta check that out. I have to yeah, check out some Steve yeah. Tibbetts. So. Oh, yeah, I listen to some weird, weird stuff now. But anyway, the abyss fits. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Uh, when we were in the haunted house, uh, it was abyss, and, and I I chose the name because it was A B. I was trying to get like on the first listing. <laughs> oh, nice! That's smart. That is really smart. <laughs> Market what, always. What made you come up with that yeah. crazy, clever? Well, A B was pretty much an alphabetical for you. Then they, right. those assholes that had numbers in there has got ahead of mine. Son of a bitch. Damn it. <laughs> so can you Did can not you think, think of, of that? Um, and can you think of any specific like influences though you have? Because now I don't think we've covered it so far in this episode yet, but the, the real reason why you're here uh, is because we are like really heavy into like old video games and stuff like that. And right. you sir are a legendary arcade artist who worked for Bally Midway back in the 80s. So we obviously are going to get there. But when I look at a lot of the stuff that you did in those days and a lot of those covers, a lot of the, the side artwork and stuff, to me, I see a lot of like comic book influence. Did, did, uh, did you have any sort of influence from that genre? Were you a comic oh. Oh, absolutely yeah yeah um like i said I, I grew up in a real small little farm town and actually i didn't even grow up in town i grew up on the farm i, I grew up on a dairy farm 
and it's a lot of hard work and you know uh my parents are both very artistically inclined and they they, they saw it in me like from an early age like i said like in kindergarten i i i told the teacher i'm gonna be an artist i knew what i was gonna be i always knew you know mm-hmm. uh and my parents saw that uh, they would always make sure that, that there was some time set aside for me to go and draw and work on it. Uh, if they get a four and two, they would drive me up to, you know, a uh, park forest. It was the nearest suburb and there was a little art league there and, you know, got me some, some lessons where, whenever they could afford to do so. You know. And here's the thing, you know, when you're growing up on a farm, you're, you're a farm kid. So that's a lot of work. Well, right. I, I yeah. probably hoisted some in the neighborhood of 1.3 million bales in my life. So, <laughs> wow. You know. That's like 1.3 million bales more hay, hay than I've ever baled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got everybody's Agreed. quota covered. No problem. You're yeah, all thanks, good. Paul. Thanks for putting in the extra work for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was young and dumb. <laughs> so, so were there any uh, comic book artists that you would uh, – you would shout out or, or uh, you could remember. Yeah, really well, you know what? I, I, I got I to gotta be honest with you. Uh, I was a huge mad comic. You know, oh, uh, mad okay. yeah. magazine. And uh, Don Kirby and uh, uh, you know, all those guys, just, just amazing. Uh, that, that's who I, I modeled my, my sure. artwork after. You know, I kind of, kind of stole their styles. I mean, really, you look at my, my cartoon style, you know, a lot of it's still peeking through. You know. Um, mm-hmm. That, that, that was my influence. Like I said, uh, you know, a little tiny farm town, you couldn't really get anything. So, you yeah. know, when we went shopping, I made sure I got my comic books. I got a couple of models to build, uh, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, whatever I was going to need to make to get it through. You know, so. But Mad Magazine, that was, that was a huge influence on me. Um, nice. Batman, you know, DC Comics. I loved, loved uh, Batman. Big, big fan of Batman since I was a little kid. Uh, Marvel, you know, I like X Men, but oh but, uh, yeah, for some reason my parents were just I don't know what they they thought X Men was, <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> what they thought it was. Crazy when, you, when you don't know what it is, it's funny. X, right? That X what thing, what's that about? I know why you got these X comics. What is that? <laughs> oh yeah, and, is and, it sexual? And, I know. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Oh, and that, kinda. I mean, and it sounds stupid to say it, but you know, they were pretty serious about it. And, and here's the thing: I was raised in a very, very strict Lutheran German farm community. Um, you know, I remember the the church services. You know, there was a German service, and then there was an English service. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, pretty, pretty double isolated. Double service, double your pleasure. Right. Right. <laughs> double bench <bit> church. <laughs> yeah, auf Deutsch. Jawohl, Achtung. What did you call me? Gott, Gott ist Liebe. The being Catholic wasn't scary enough. Now you have lutheran in general yeah, yeah, okay yeah luther is just protestant version of catholic i don't know oh, yeah dude. don't don't let anybody yeah, fool you there. my goodness yeah there's, there's <laughs> a lot of a lot of wrist slapping going on in the oh, my <laughs> i don't know what they were slapping your wrist with i don't want to know <laughs> well, I'm German, so it's a sausage. That wasn't so bad, you know. <laughs> but but what kind of sausage? <laughs> okay, let's not go. There. <laughs> this, I can see this. This is gonna go real fast, right down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they told you it was a sausage, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> you know that's where this you was going. believe them. <laughs> Why did you believe them? <laughs> Why? Why? Why am I so messed up now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got hit with a sausage too many times, Ma. They hit me with sausage, Ma. And like, no, they don't. They don't hit you with sausages like they do. They do hit me with sausages. Yeah. No, and my here's parents. the mark right here. It's like this big red sausage <laughs> mark. Sausage <laughs> right. Yeah, if you came home with sausage marks, like, what did you do in school today? You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get twice as much saucer when you get home. <laughs> oh my god! Going from my, that, my parents were awesome. They really were. Like, like I said, they tried to make uh, time for me to uh, to do art, and you know, uh, they really promoted and pushed it. And uh, uh, they they knew that there, you know, there was no future in farming. It was a hard life. Um, you know, I, 
it took 500 acres back, even back in the 60s, to really make a go of it. And we had 398. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. So it was always, it always seemed like it was always hard scrabble. It was always, mm. you know, just barely making it, just under the wire. We were always just kind of break. It was always break even game. Wow. You know? And uh, that, yeah. that was a hard way to live. And it's all dependent on weather and everything else that could possibly go wrong, which is everything. <clears throat> yeah. You know? Yeah. So they realized, you know, we got to get this kid out of here. <laughs> that's amazing, honestly, that they were able to see art as uh, a worthwhile career for you because uh, not every parent really thinks that way. You know, a lot of, a lot of people are like, oh, don't do that. You want to get out of here, but go be a lawyer. Or, you know, uh, well, or, or a doctor. Be a doctor. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I think what a lot of had to do with it was, was um, neither one of them got to do what they wanted to do. My dad, really, I mean, my dad loved farming, but he didn't want to be a farmer. He wanted to fly. He wanted to be a pilot. And he dreamed of it. He, you know, uh, I remember he was scraping together, uh, you know, money to go take pilot lessons. And you know, he, he did finally, uh, I think he, he did do his, uh, um, you know, his, what is, what's it called? I can't think. Uh, <laughs> when you go alone, uh, you're, you're, you're Solo flight. You do your solo flight. Oh, okay. Right. So, uh, right. Bar. I don't know. But the thing is, they didn't get to do, they didn't get to grow up to be who they wanted to be. Right. So they wanted you to know? make sure you had that opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. That, that's that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I love them to death. You know, my, my, uh, you know, my, my dad unfortunately died in 2001 um, <laughs> from farming. Uh, all, all the farm oh. chemicals gave him cancer. Oh, wow. Jeez. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and and you know it's, it's funny. He uh, his his funeral was on the morning of nine eleven. Wow! Oh wow! Oh, and, and uh, okay, this this gets you know, we were my my dog of eleven years while we were at the hospital with my dad on a death watch. My dog dies. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, no. that I'm is like, a hell I'm, of a day. I'm Jesus. telling you, you know, you throw a pickup truck and a train, you got a country hit, man. Okay. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, yeah. You need a tractor <laughs> and like a pickup truck. I'm telling oh, you, man. you know, dad died, dog died. <laughs> wow, <laughs> my tractor died. Nine eleven. Yeah, yeehaw. Just me and a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, that was a weird week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's weird, weird. For sure. yeah so, so um but yeah i mean that's you great really that you brought parents... us down uh, a couple nights we were happy but now we're like we're a little less <laughs> yeah, thanks, <laughs> we're less happy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so i could sorry, i could really. bring it down a little bit more with with my issues of 2001 but i'm not gonna go there <laughs> um okay so let's talk about the the midway years Okay. So I want to know what was it like working for Midway? Okay, well, um, first when I first was hired there, and, and it took forever uh, to get the to get hired. It was like four interviews. I was I was wondering is it ever going to happen? And every time I went for an interview, um, the room got bigger and more people showed up. You know, I, I remember that last interview. They're like, there were like maybe a dozen people at a table. I'm like, oh my god, you know. And they said, just, just show us the stuff you showed us before. I'm like for the fourth time, okay. You know, <laughs> right. but I, I, I got the job, and I was hired by Midway, and uh, um, uh, Larry Davick was already there, and we we were the Midway guys, he and I. And so I remember being so disappointed. My, my big influence, when I was in college, we played pinball, like just religiously. Yeah. To the point of, uh, you know, we'd go to graphic arts class and uh, check in, and then we'd sneak out the back, and we'd go to the union and play pinball. And I think that's really nice. where my college education occurred. <laughs> oh, really, pinball. Yeah, it really was. You know, we would just live on the pinball machines. So now uh, I get hired by Midway. To do to work on video games, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Oh, so I was really hoping to do those pinball games. This, this video game crap isn't gonna last. Yeah. <laughs> Fly by night. So night. funny, you know, right? <laughs> but, but it's funny how you know you, you set your set your goals for something, and you know, it goes just, totally just skew. Yeah. You center. zigzag, you zigzag just, along the path. Yeah, you you you, do, you go to zig and it zags, and some yeah. of you are like, just hey, along zag the road. was pretty cool. I sort of. Well, yeah. I'm, leaning, I'm leaning into the zag now, man. You know, right. So, uh, 
Okay, so um, and this we, was like eighty two, right? This is eighty two, right? Early eighty two. So, so by this point, Midway had already hit huge with like Space Invaders and yes. Pac Man. Gigantic. They were and, like and Ms. Oh, Pac Man had just come out, and, and actually, my very first job, the very first day, um, it was like the honeymoon was over. Cut these color screens for the cocktail version of Ms. Pac Man. That was my very first day. Was cutting the color screens on Ms. Pac Man, and I, I was like, okay, okay. And I was like the eager beaver, you know, do a great job, you know. Oh, like I'm done already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you didn't do the illustration work on Ms. Pac Man. Oh, oh. Okay. no. All right, that's that's the thing too. I, I, I'm just kind of recently too this this happened. Um, when you when you say, oh, you worked on that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can mean a lot of things. You know, I, like, okay, I mean, I can yeah. say I worked on Ms. Pac-Man. I did. I cut color screens. Are you really going to claim that? Is that, you know, that's where you want right. you know, to hang right. your hat on that? No, I, you know. It's like, I, I worked on Spy Hunter, too. And I, I thought, was, but what I did on Spy Hunter was, was just the, you know, it was the control panel. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. super cool, though, yeah. Oh yeah, that was I mean that was a cool thing to do. It was fun, and you know, and Doug, but Doug Watson, did, you know, did most of the stuff. And so there was a lot of accessory stuff, and I found myself at first kind of doing that because um, uh, Larry and I worked uh, by ourselves for a while. Oh my god, our, our first couple of months there was just it was horrible. Really? Was, oh, really? Yeah, it was it was terrible. Mainly, and here's why: they, they didn't have any office space for us. They were building this new building. Uh, it was beautiful you know, a state-of-the-art building that we were all going to move into. And uh, until then, they didn't have a space for us, so they put us in the corner of the uh, uh, arcade slash uh, testing room, you know, the, where they, they trust all the triggers, they set up little mechanisms, just go bah, 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 yep. and pull the trigger up a gazillion yeah. times. I mean, right. Imagine about 30 of those going on on the oh, shelf. You know, the Wicking away like that. And then, you know, uh, probably another 30 arcade games, and everybody was in there constantly playing the games. They, they encouraged people to come down and play the games all the time and leave their, you know, two cents worth about what they thought. That was the din we were supposed to be working in. Uh, oh, That's so hard cool. to focus with that many things going on down yeah, there. Really? Holy crap. I, I can't oh, imagine. it was horrible. It was horrible. So I remember uh, bringing my stereo and just putting, you know, big headphones on. I got yelled at for having headphones on. And, you're like, I can't get anything done if I don't have headphones on. What do you want me to do here? So we were thrilled when, when uh, they finally built the, you know, the new building and, and moved us into it. Well, at the same time, they, they brought in everybody from uh, Ballet. All the Ballet pinball gods were coming over. And my new boss uh, was, was uh, Greg Ferris. And then his boss is Paul Ferris. Uh, now, the, the names sound the same, but there's no relation. They're spelled completely different, but kind of pronounced the same. It's kind of confusing. But anyway, uh, Paul Ferris, awesome guy. Oh, my God. He was the best boss in the world. Um, I still run into him. I ran into him at a wedding a couple of years ago. And, and the funny thing is he was a, he was a high school uh, art teacher before he started there. And when he left there, when all, all that went away, he went back to teaching high school art again. In fact, my okay. nieces and nephews had him as their art teacher. No wow. way. Yeah, That's cool. yeah at, at, at Lincoln Way West, uh, or oh. Lincoln Way Central, Lincoln Way Central, out um, in New Lenox, uh, Illinois. Here. Funny old world, yeah. isn't it? Right, right. <laughs> small so, world. So, yeah, so, so, uh, um, so now we're, we're, we're all joined together, and we've got this big, huge... You know, and I'm I'm like kind of fanboy because you know I'm in this cubicle and I'm thinking, oh my god, you know, the the guy in the next cubicle was the guy that did the artwork on the pinball game I used to play in college. Yeah, right. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy you know? crap! And, and so did that guy. Oh my god, the place is cut. It's crawling with pinball gods. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they're There's all. There's that deaf and blind kid I know. Yeah, they're all pinball <laughs> gods, and I'm not. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, kind You're of. Just kind yeah. of color screens from his Pac-Man. I don't know. You know, right? And 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 really, I got to tell you, up until that point, we were, we were kind of just treading water. Really, we yeah. hadn't done a whole lot of anything. Um, you know, the real the real work kicked in once once uh, you know the whole art department kind of you know formulated and congealed a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> so for a while there, I was just kind of what I what I referred to as I was just taking out the trash. You know. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 
paying your dues. Yeah. You're, yep. you're, you know, you're, you're kind of cutting thing. color screens. You're, you know, every once in a while I do a couple of sketches for an idea and we'll throw it in with a bunch and see if, it gets, if any of them get picked. But other than mm-hmm. that, you know, right back to the, you know, why don't you, why don't you organize those files? <laughs> yeah, that's what I, that's uh, why I'm here. Yeah, that's what I wanted oh, to do that's here. Really yeah, well, yeah, okay, you know, so one day uh, Paul Ferris came to my desk and, you know, and you got to know at this point, I, I was a little bit like, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I was a little bit like, um, okay, what's going on? <laughs> what fresh hell be this, you know? Uh, and, and the fresh hell that he was bringing me was Clayton's Hollow. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Nice. Very so, beautiful. Yeah. So, so cool. He so he he popped that and uh, he popped that on my or he came to me and said, "Hey, you got this game? I've got it queued up in the, you know, in the secret room over there. Yeah. You're gonna be the only one to see it. You know, I want you to do all the artwork on this." Like, you were the only one to see it. Holy shit! That's well, crazy. You, you know, know at like, first that and, secret. And there was a thing to think. You know, there there was a certain amount of um, if it ain't your gig. You don't need to know nothing about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're working on whatever project there. They have you on already, so you got to need to know follow. basis, and you don't need to know. Right. Well, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about, about actually working there. Um, it was like working at Fort Knox. It was like the Pentagon. Uh, you, it's 1982, and I've got a card with a magnetic strip on it. Nobody had magnetic. I got to quit doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> lose the earpiece. <laughs> the earpiece keeps yeah, going yeah, on. Nobody had magnetic <laughs> strips on cards, you know. That was yeah. our, you know, yeah. card. Um, the the, the entry code was changed every month. It, <laughs> oh my wow. God! Really? Yeah. Wow! Yeah, oh yeah. If you want, this is consider this 19, 1982, 83, 84, uh, <clears throat> Reagan years. Before the video um, game crash, this is when everything was like going as fast, you know, like up the steep incline. Oh, as, as oh my God! Possible. And money was no object. Except for paying us, <laughs> <laughs> of course, right. But but if you wanted to invent something and make something and and right. you know it cost a bunch of extra money, you know, okay, well, let's 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 talk about uh, you know the game, little game called Wacko, okay? Nice. <laughs> Right. Wacko. So I hadn't heard of this game, but I looked it up uh, when we were kind of looking yeah. at your portfolio. And this is an interesting arcade machine. This is it really a, is actually really this is like this is like like uh, one of the games I wanted to ask you about. Like, what was the the idea of the whole weird slanting cabinet? Idea yeah, because for those who don't know, it's it's not a typical cabinet at all. The whole thing is built on a oh, slant, yeah. and it's, it's a mind, it's a it's a mind fuck. It really is. Yeah. It's like which like around other normal looking cabinets right, it's, it's, like, always, mm. it's like you always you think like okay what's wrong the flooring in this one spot so uh, like, right. so, like what's so wrong with this floor here so so real real quickly uh um it, it's kind of a brian colon game but not and, uh, <laughs> and i'll tell you how um he invented all the characters that are in this game for another game called Captain Co- Cruiser. Cosmic Cruiser. Cosmic right? Cruiser. Cosmic Cruiser. Yeah. Right. And and the and the hero was Captain Cruiser. Okay. So uh Cosmic Cruiser and all these characters uh kind of migrated over to this this game that they had in mind to do. And Brian was like, you know, I've got this other stuff going and you know, he was he was their fair haired child. They loved any, anything Brian did, man. Like, he and I talk about this. He goes, oh, no, that's not true. Yes, it is. You yes. know it. I loved him, which was a good thing. He was a, you know, he was a genius, you know. He came up with all this great, crazy stuff. So uh, <clears throat> it fell on me to do all the art, all the cabinet artwork and the header and everything. I, I did all the artwork on, on Wacko, Wacko as well. Okay. Um, and the funny thing is, they're all his characters. So now I had to do his characters and keep them true to style, and you know, but give it a new right layer and you know energy to it, and bring this new game together. And then on top of and and I, actually, his contribution to it was making the cabinet wacko, was making it all. Uh, oh, all. doing the the topsy turvy kind of vibe. yeah, because the characters yeah. already existed. I'm doing the artwork. Somebody else was, was actually doing the, the game itself, you know, programming it. And really, the only thing that he, he did was, you know, make the, the wacky cabinet. 
Was that, did that make it difficult, like uh, working with weird templates or something where, they, you know, instead of a straight line on the top and on the bottom, it's just this weird slant? Was it, was it yeah. especially strange or? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, well, okay, it wasn't crazy. It was just, you know. Okay, it wasn't here. wacko. I mean, it wasn't like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was really exactly wacko. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you can see here, Oops, here's the, uh, you know, here, this is the front of the of yep. the control panel. Yeah, yep. You know, yep. so it's just, it's slanted. But I mean, basically, it's just, you know, okay, so you slanted your. your it's a neat gimmick. I've never seen it, uh, another machine do it. It's pretty yeah. cool. No, yeah. it, th that is for sure. And, and because it was just, you know. It was a logistical nightmare. Yeah, I bet. You know, you know, fitting the monitor into it and the bezels yeah. and everything else. I had to go, oh, you know. Yeah. And the engineers would come by, where the hell's Brian? Where is he? Right. Why'd you have us make this damn zigzaggy machine? What are we doing with this crap? He's hiding right. under his desk. And, right. you know. It's like rather than using the template or using the parts that are in a million yeah. arcade machines, you got to make all this custom right. stuff. So, so here's here's some Brian Colon trivia. He used to keep a an old army cop under his desk, so he'd take naps. Oh <laughs> you you, you got to do what you got to do. You're like, yeah. I can't leave work. I got to right. sleep though. Well, you, but you know that's, that was the thing is you know uh, the deal kind of was um, we'll work when we want to work. Don't you worry about it. The work will get done. We'll we'll probably be here way more than eight hours a day. But you know we want to take a break. I'm gone for two hours. Do not question it. <laughs> Don't worry. It'll be yeah, well. You can't, yeah, you right. can't force creative types. I mean, we, we and are they, a, uh, a and they were totally bunch. cool about that. <clears throat> no, no other place was, but they, awesome. they were, they were totally cool about it. So that is really, really cool. Yeah. Right. So, uh, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to, I'm going to use that as my segue to, to, to tell a uh, Pat uh, McMahon story. <clears throat> he, uh, um, I know uh, whoever brought up uh, burger time earlier. Yeah, I asked you if you had worked yes, on Burger yeah, Time. Yeah, no, that was a total Pat uh -huh. McMahon uh, uh, game, and you know it, it has his unique styling to it. It's just just amazing. He's just an incredible talent. Mm -hmm. um, he had the, the the great ability to find these little sleazy dive bar that would have have like the best food. Okay, you know, he, he, I found this place, man. Oh, oh, that's 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 me and Tim. Yeah. That's like our. We, back, we love you know? finding the greasy yeah, spoons like, right, that right. are like it delicious. Like the, yeah. the grossest, greasiest, smallest place. Mon they have like the best prime rib for some reason that makes no Mon sense. Pa right, 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 right. The V, the and this and this one, <laughs> you know, there's a VFW that was like down like four steps into a, you know, it wasn't like a basement, but it was like a sub. Oh yeah. Yeah. The little, you know, yep. so all the windows were way up at the top of the, you know, that was the only light coming in was like at the top of the ceiling, yep. you know? And, uh, it, it was, a uh, it was, like I said, a VFW bar and you, you had the day drinkers in there who just come off the night shift. And then you had these bored housewives trolling around in, in, in negligees trying to sell you tickets to, you know, for whatever, you know, <laughs> these stupid lotteries. <laughs> and we're just here for the Reuben sandwich, brother. <laughs> they make a damn fine Reuben. <laughs> and a cheeseburger you would kill for. You know, and that was it. And it was dirt cheap. And you'd get a mound of fries. And, you know, if you, if you got rid of a mound, they'd come over with another mound. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. It was a great place. So we ate there all the time. And uh, there was this guy across the bar and, you know, kind of had the the blossom, the gin blossom nose and kind of a little pudgy, you know. You look at the guy on the side of Burger Time, that's, <laughs> that's him. <laughs> Random VFW guy number five. Yes. Just the dude on. <laughs> Burger Time, the guy with the hat. You look at that little round nose. And oh. Oh, it is the guy across the bar. That's super funny. <laughs> um, so we, we, we can't Apple go too far. I, I, do share, I do got to share, I do got to share one story because, uh, it's a couple games back now, but you just keep going, man. You just keep, you're like, you're, you're just, a fountain of amazing stories. Yeah, we want to talk going. to you forever. I just want to make sure I tell the story. So, um, I was, uh, I, w I had never seen the cabinet in person before, but as you know, there's, uh, this sort of movement now where there's a lot of these barcades that are becoming a sort of popular thing where it's, um, I don't know if they have near you, but we have a few near us. It's basically, you know, a, a bar with arcade Chicago. machines yeah. and 
Yeah. It, that's the point yeah. you go. Some sometimes you go and it's a it's a like emulation. There'll be screens set up with like you know just uh, with Mame or different emulators or whatever, and you can play old arcade games. But the good ones actually have the cabinets. And there's one. Uh, so we're in Massachusetts, and um, in in Providence, Rhode Island, there's a great one, uh, which is about an hour from us, and it's it's called um, Replay. Free play, free play, right. yeah. free play, free, free play. And they have just an insane amount of machines, just like a hundred machines. And they're all from the very early to mid eighties. Nothing after that, nothing older than like 86 or 87, probably really like good stuff. And so I'm, I'm walking up and down the aisles and I'm seeing all these things. And a lot of the games I had never seen before. And uh, then, then there it is over here, shining like a big red beacon straight out of hell itself what is it it's fucking satan's hollow okay <laughs> now, it's, now, it, it is an eye-catching cabinet it is like you see that really thing is, and it's yeah. like oh my god it looks like a metal band it logo like it's so cool cabinet. it is so so i think it's interesting so first of all i had heard of the game it's like the most ridiculous name like this exists satan's hollow not even like devil's hollow or something like no no we're gonna call it satan's right. full tilt on the name right yeah. full tilt boogie yeah. on the devil and, the you know. and now this is my very 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 first game ever where i'm doing all the artwork on it myself you know paul ferris came over to my desk he's got this you know, here's this idea, here's the whole thing. You go in here, you're showing just you. I want to see sketches in the morning. I'll, you know, come up with a, a header. I, and here's the thing. I actually still have the color comp. Oh, my God. You have nice. the original. See the original? Oh yeah, well, the original God. marker wow. rendering. Wow. Uh, this is oh, my God. It's 30, amazing. What is it? 37 years old. 37-year-old marker rendering. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I saved everything. I really did. Nice. I really did. And now down the side of the thing, you have this big winged devil holding an orb of light. And yeah. he's, heard he's wearing this gold armor. It is so badass. Wicked cool. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. It's so awesome. Everything on this cabinet is everything I love. I oh, love thanks, armor man. and all, you know, metal and all this stuff. And it's and like Satan I, has a lot of Satan on it. <laughs> hey, I love we Satan. love Satan. You know? I just love Satan. <laughs> Satan's our buddy. Satan's our pal. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Odin, Odin, I, I get the wacky uh, hate mail from uh, um, a bunch of televangelists. Oh, I, I wish I had those. Oh, 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 I would, oh my I would God. Kill, I would kill to have those letters. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They were great. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, Paul Ferris, again, best, best boss ever. He's just the coolest guy. Um, <clears throat> I remember he came over to my desk. And a couple of them had like like the gold, you know, limit or gold, you know, embossed crosses on the top, and you know, you know, and he, and he throws these letters on my on my desk, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, it was from like Jerry Falwell, and one was from uh, um, uh, Jim Baker. And, yeah, uh, oh, you know, he's still tooling around. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. Got it. We used, we used to have a we used to have a drinking game in college. We'd we'd turn them on, and his old his wife she, she died unfortunately, but she, you know she um, she wear all his makeup and she and she'd cry every show. And we had this drinking game where we turned the volume down, just put on Pink Floyd, and you know whenever she start crying, and we you know we we bet when 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 it was you know, when how long into the show she was crying. Whoever you, know, you drink, you know, <laughs> I got the rules. But it was all based around. Meanwhile, you're getting hate mail right, from him about yeah, making right. Satan follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, it's like a letter from him and you know Jerry Falwell, and you know you're, you're all going to hell. Yeah. Way ahead of you, buddy. You know. <laughs> you're like, you think that's news? You're, yeah, yeah, you're a little late on that. You know. Well, I'm gonna have tons of practice because I've been playing Satan's Hollow, and I know how to kill all the gargoyles. I know how to kill the wyvern. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So there. Uh, so, so now here, now, now, this is so. This is weird. This sounds weird now to say it, but uh, at the time, okay. Now, because okay, remember that. Remember that Lutheran Christian, sure. You know, background farm community. Satan's Hollow. Sure, yeah. Right. That's your first game. I'm 24 years old. Yeah. Hey, mom, guess what I'm doing at work. <laughs> you know? 
Maybe we'll just keep this one to ourselves. <laughs> Look what I did right. at school today. <laughs> right. <laughs> then, I'm getting, then I'm getting hate mail. <laughs> you know. <laughs> For oh once, when mom goes, when mom goes, Paul, that is the devil. <laughs> that is the devil, Paul. And you're like, you're like thanks, mom. It's supposed to be. <laughs> oh, mom, well, thanks, man. I- <laughs> oh, I really it means a lot that. coming from you. you know? <laughs> oh God, oh, that's you know the devil. You've been, God knows you've been pointing him out to me for the last twenty four years. <laughs> so I, I just have one. I just have one more quick question on this. Yeah. Um, so now this, as as I said, so the main cabinet is primarily red. It's it's very red. The whole side. It does have your artwork of the devil on the side, but it's very red. The full front of it from the, uh, the control panel down is just red. And this sort of goes with uh, kind of what, what Midway had done in the past. They did with Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man. Ms. Ms. Pac-Man was mostly blue. Uh, Pac-Man was mostly yellow. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you remember anything, uh, any direction or anything like that where they said we want it to be a primary color? We wanted to, because, was that a, a direction they were going with at the time to try to stand out against the competition? You know, I- Hmm. Or is well, that that's a, stylistic that's an interesting, choice that you, know, you had? Yeah, you know, I, I don't remember how that actually came about to be. To tell you hmm. the truth, uh, it's whether, a few. It's a few midway games from that. Yeah, era, no, you're, no, you're like, right when you once you say that. <clears throat> but honestly, I'm, I'm kind of th- looking at it going, hmm, you got a point. I never, you know, I never really thought Spy of it Hunter that is, way. Uh, is mostly <clears throat> gray, I think. I think no, that, no. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, you told me of a point. And, and like, uh, I remember the the uh, the jet black uh, Pac Man. You know, like, like the we started calling them the, the pa- After Dark Pac Man. Pac Man After Dark. You know, they were jet black with a you know graphic. They were they were really cool. Uh, but oh, that like was kind of came a up later. I remember the the original was yellow. I thought. No, right, right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But then the, later on, they made they made like. Oh, the, okay. Then it made was yellow. Black it was black. Yeah. Which, and they were like, yeah, that's kind of cool. It looked pretty cool. And I remember going out onto the uh, in the factory and just seeing the line of, of jet black Pac-Man games almost Pac-Man going Pac-Man after to, dark. Right. Yeah, that's almost cool. going down into like a, a you know an, uh, a vanishing point. <laughs> the yeah. the factory right. was huge, wow. just huge. That is a um, lot of pack. Yeah. Early oh, pack so, in there. So you're talking about you know I've got the control panel. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Holy nice. crap. Wow. God, that's right. cool. Let's see what we got. Can I do this? Here, let's do this. Shine off of it. Oh, oh man. Yeah, a little better. That is, just awesome. it. that is so awesome. Holy so that's, crap. That is Look the control that. panel for Satan's Hollow. Yep. That, uh, so that is actually, that appears on two different panels. Because that's uh, right where the control panel is. And then the very front of the machine is. As the dragons, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Awesome. That is awesome. And then you actually had some of that artwork is uh, is on the side, like the frame of the, where the monitor is. Yeah, yeah. Th- there's um, so, some more of, of this this styling. Uh, I mean, I that, that was the thing is I only had uh, three colors to work with. Uh, you know, I, I actually don't. Well, okay, black, and then two other colors, and and one of them was yellow, and the other one was uh, um, a little deeper ochre. That was it. So that's actually a really good point. And I've always wondered this, and you are the first person I've ever gotten to ask this question. A lot of old arcade games, you really saw that. They only had three colors or so. The Pac-Man's for sure. uh, But a lot of, like, if you think Galaga, it's like green, orange, and white. It was about money. It was about money. It was about money. Just the printing of it. But but the funny thing is, now, because of that, um, it, it, I find restrictions to be very creative. Yeah. You know, like, like, like you, yeah. you know, I hate when they say, like, just do whatever you want to. Oh God, don't do that. Give me some, you know, give me some. Right. Give me some confine me. Give me a little right, bit of right. guide guidance. Yeah. yeah. You know, so with this, you know, I have three colors to work with. What can I make that will like just pow with three lousy colors? So yeah. I decided to just all do brass and just these funky, you know, design. R- really, e- everything you liked was everything I liked yeah. <laughs> back then too. I-, I did. I just drew what I liked and was just had a great time with it. Um, my, you like Satan, my, apparently. 
Yeah, my my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, fe my fellow artist nicknamed uh, the leather chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah, right. <laughs> Judas Priest would uh, have these kind of chickens on stage. Yeah, right, 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 you know. So, chicken. Uh, so, okay, so then, um, <laughs> so then I, I uh, picked out the, I did cut the color screens, I did the, you know, the header art, and I had it printed up. We, we always had prototypes printed up. Actually, the ones I, these I have, these are actually prototypes. These are now production models. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, this is the first one, and um, you know, Paul. I remember Paul Farrow's coming by and going, "Yeah, yeah, I see where you're going with this here, you know." But you got to remember that is backlit, so you know it's really gonna like pretty much that will go away. So fix that. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's too much yellow, too much light. Yeah, yeah, light right, right. You know, right. And I, you know, and it was my first game. Yeah, so I, I I didn't yeah. know. I, I I thought, oh, that subtleness, you know. And I'm not a, it's a video game, buddy. Subtly, <laughs> that's not where right. we're going. No. So so I changed it and then turned it to this, uh, you know. And okay. basically, well, it, what it was is I didn't change a thing. I I just got you know used a different color. Mm, yeah, you know, picked out that that particular screen. I went, well, okay, let's make that screen more of an ochre brown, and, mm -hmm. and there it is. You know, wow. so, nice. Yeah, so awesome. it worked out pretty. All d all done with markers, huh? Uh, well, no. This, this was this was um, uh, pen and ink. All the, the black part of it is pen and ink, and then um, then you cut color screens over. Oh, you know what? I've actually got some here. I've got some stuff here. I brought here. This is some cut uh, pen and ink stuff. Oh, boy, back in the day, this was uh, Star Guards. Let me see it. I have a piece of paper here. Something. Right, so Star Guards, you you would talk to me about uh, briefly off mic. We were uh, we were yeah. saying you said it was built yeah. off the oh wow off the Rampage engine, the game. Uh, oh well, not necessarily the engine, but the the uh, um, the cabinet. The cabinet oh, okay. was the yeah same. The, okay. that Rampage cat. You know, like yeah, that that three player cabinet and 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 the extra wide header. It actually um, had the same exact three stripes at the bottom when I looked up the uh, the cabinet. Uh, it's funny right, that right. the side is very similar. So, so here was. So Ooh, this was the Star Guards. Oh, it's such yeah. an awesome. That's so cool. And, and so, it's so wide. Yeah, well, the, yeah. The game was hugely wide. Yeah, like, but like, well, here you. Let's, let's see. Let, um, Satan's Hollow was a standard size cabinet. Ah. Ah. You can see the. Oh, oh wow! Man. Yes. man, that is so much bigger. Holy cow! Right, right. Kind of get an idea. Of what's going on there here. Um, cool. Yeah. So that, anyway, that, that was a game that like they already had the rampage cabinet and that whole mm -hmm. configuration. So they're kind of coming up with games to you know utilize. use it again. Yeah. You use yeah. it again, right? You know, use it again. Um, Definitely. But like, like you said, when the bottom fell out of the, out of the business in '84. <clears throat> you know, we were all sent packing. And, and actually, they did me a favor. I was one of the first ones to get laid off because, you know, only there two years, everybody else, five, ten years, you know, the yeah. pinball guy. And besides that, the pinball guys, I was just the up and coming guy. Right. So, um, <clears throat> here's how cool uh, uh, Paul Ferris was. When I got, the guy got laid off, he brought me in his office. By the end of it, he's like almost in tears. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're taking this way harder than me. <laughs> I really, I mean, I remember the whole time thinking, I'll, I'll do okay. What the hell? It's, it'll all work out, I'm sure. I was young and dumb. You know, but, you know, the thing is, I, you know, I just had my apartment and my car paid. <laughs> what did right. I have? You know? Right. <clears throat> Beer money. I'm good. You know? right. I can afford what I need. I'm good. Don't worry yeah, about kind it. Yeah, kind of. You know, and I and I got lucky. I mean, uh, I had a bunch of friends that were working in advertising, and uh, like I said, I got lucky. They let me go at the end of March, and all of the Christmas campaigns were just starting to be fired up. They were just doing the pitches, or if you know, mm -hmm. they, they start that stuff in you know late, you know, uh, late spring and. And run all summer. I mean, you're you're finishing up all Christmas stuff in July, hmm. you know, in the advertising. Right. You know, so I showed up at just the right time. 
and there was a liquor company, uh, Old Forester, I think, and then that was my very, I, I got into the ad agency, and somehow I managed to get a, a huge illustration for a, a, a POP display in the store, and before I knew what my, my POP dis display career was off and running. And I was making a lot of money working Michigan Avenue, up and down Michigan Avenue. So um, freelancing on the right. games after that was kind of like a little side thing. That was for Just fun. like a like a passion wow. project. Like it's fun right. to do. Yeah. I mean, right. I was making decent money on it, but mm -hmm. the real money at the time anyway. You know, this is like, yeah. okay, this is 84 to, you know, to, well, from, from then on, you know, up until the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, man, <clears throat> I was, I did, I did pretty well. You know, I, I, I had enough money to make be an international ski bum for ten years. <laughs> wow! Really, I, wow. I've, I've, I've skied all over the world. I've been everywhere. Um, wow! They're, they're nice. Probably, you know, they're probably on a resort out west in the United States or Canada that, that I have not been to at least once in a couple of two or three times. You know? Wow! Nice. So yeah, so wow. it takes a lot of money to be <laughs> to have that kind of lifestyle. Yeah, For sure. Yeah. yeah, you did well, man. That is yeah. amazing. So amazing. so sure. you know, well, and, and that was okay. I'll, I'll just in 1990. I mean, I made over a hundred grand in 1990 money. Wow, that's know, wild. As an artist, that. That is why. Wow. Even I was kind of like, holy crap. Yeah. Uh, yeah and back that then, was a lot of money. That's yeah. gone away. No, no mm -hmm. artist is making that now. That, that, that all went south. It's, yeah. yeah. And advertising, too. I mean, all, all my buddies that were, you know, that were on my level, you know, I'm still real good friends with all of them. We're all scrounging, making a living, just, just barely, you know, scraping together a living. So it's, it's, you know, it's not what it used to be, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, you you hit it at the right time, and you were fortunate. That's really really cool. Timing, yeah, time is everything. Timing is so when you, when you, yeah. yeah, timing is everything. So when you came back and would sometimes occasionally do do some some game work, or did you get to do any pinballs? Did you ever get to fulfill that that itch, scratch that itch from, from only childhood? only one, only once one. Yeah, and that was like. After everything, I think that was actually that might have been actually my very, very, very last game, because kind of Mortal Kombat almost ended. It kind of did end my whole career. You you think that you know something that successful and that that explosive and amazing would have sprung boarded or something? Yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. But but I mean, I already had ten years in when I did that, and and the thing is, I was brought on board to do that because I had ten years in. Um, you know, John Tobias at the time. <clears throat> He was fresh out of school. I don't, I don't believe he'd actually done any production art, you know, on, on anything. So, you know, so what was well before in. before you you keep going? What was the pinball machine? Sorry, got off of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to. I I want to know what it is. What is it? What uh, was the pinball machine? Yeah, uh, it it was. Um, ah, <laughs> I'm good <enough. laughs> <laughs> oh my god demolition man oh my god oh, nice. <laughs> demolition man based on the movie yeah based on the movie the Correct. movie that we're cli cl right now we are living the aftermath of yes as it turns out what did you say <laughs> uh, how point you know it's, it's fun you're not the first one to say this to me how poignant <laughs> yeah that's like it's everybody's saying it on the internet it's really funny that demolition man, right, right. So here's my demolition man story. Uh, uh, I can't remember the. Oh, I wish I could remember her name. Uh, there was a an artist at uh, Williams that was doing the artwork. That was scheduled to do the artwork for Demolition Man, but she was, got bogged up with some other project that she was working on, and it was it was taking too long. So they were like, "All right, we've got a production schedule. We got to get this going." Uh, <clears throat> they went to Doug Watson and said, "Can you suggest somebody?" And he suggested me. So I came in, and uh, we had, you know, uh, Wesley Snipes and Stallone and uh, um, Sandra Bullock. It was yep. our first movie. Excuse me. So um, that I, I did portraits of the three of them, and then, like, an explosion, a car. You know, it's a typical it, no, it, comic book. It's a book. fantastic piece of art. I actually 100% remember this game. Oh, good, because that's not mine. <laughs> that's not my no. <laughs> And, oh, shit. No. Oh, shit. And, here's, <laughs> and here's why. Here's the story. <laughs> That's why you let me finish the game. Yeah, right. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so so I did the the artwork. And I, I wish I I wish I knew we were going to talk about that because actually I actually have the artwork that I did for the art. The, so it was, oh, I was I did, yeah I had to do marker. I saw that down there too. And I thought oh, I'm going to drag everything up. Didn't I? God no. Um, so here we are talking about it. Of course I didn't bring it up. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I did this comp and, and I did it with markers and airbrush. I mean it was almost like like a finished painting. It really was, and and. and I did it that way because I really wanted to impress the crap out of them. And they were like, wow, this is the best damn comp we've ever seen. I was almost could use it for production art. And that was my problem, too, is I got so good at comps that it, um, the advertising end of it, you know, I'd bring them in, they go, why, why should we pay somebody to do the final art? We'll just use this. Well, shit. <laughs> Damn it, I made it too good. <laughs> yeah, screwed, my, screwed myself again. <laughs> that uh, happened a lot. I really, I, I, I find it pulled back, you know. Don't, don't be so good, you know. <laughs> okay, so Demolition Man, so I did this great job on it. I was all proud of myself. And they're like, yeah, that takes ass, man. So before we go into full production and give you the big go ahead on that, uh, we need to get, you know, the, the studio to sign off on it. Uh, Yes. And that's where things went totally south for, you know. Right. So they got in front of uh, um, Snipes, and he went, oh, my head's not as big as Stallone's. Oh, God. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so so now, we go, now go look at the art. And, and I can't remember her name. Yeah, the, the, the actual final art where Stallone's head is smaller than Snipes now. Like, yeah. like Snipes' or, or, head is Or like the same. Too. Yeah, yeah, they made it. Um, Made it big. It had to be. That was all him. That was all Snipes. Wow. So now, yeah. So now, in the interim, while I'm waiting for that to happen, while Snipes was having his hissy fit about you know his head not being as big as Stallone's, mm -hmm. um, this lovely you know talented lady, I can't remember her name. <laughs> I hate when that happens. But she she got done with her project, so now she's freed up, and that was the end of me. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. That's oh, I, I would love to see the I version that you did. That we'll have to make sure that we get that and yeah. uh, post it on our page later. Yeah. I'll, dig, I'll dig that out. I will dig that out. And, and, you know, so, there's, so. there's one other question from this era, and I want to pass it off to, um, to Joe to ask about it. But, um, Joe, I think, I think you know what I'm alluding to here. Yes. Uh, Transformers. Uh, was there like an arcade planned? From Midway, because I, for, as far as I know, it never came out. So I'm wondering, like maybe that was the the whole uh, video game crash that was happening at that time. Maybe that's why it never came out. Because you have it listed on your LinkedIn, and we yeah. we, we can't figure out what. Yeah, know, like, oh, like why? Okay, right. It, yes. Oh, I got. Okay, I'll tell you what it was. Um, it started out. Oh, look what I happen to have here. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yo. Oh my God. <laughs> that yeah. is awesome. Okay. So, so guess what this became? What? This became Star Guards. I was going to say, oh, it looks oh like Star God. Guards. It yeah. does look like they took similar That's ideas. Why? It started out, it started out of train. And, and I got to be honest, uh, like, I, I should probably go change that because it never became Transformers. And, and actually, when I found the artwork, in my mind, it, it's like, oh, Transform yeah, that's right, that old Transformers game. It's actually Star Guards. Right, actually. Uh, Star Guards. But, yeah. uh, but we started, yeah, like I said, we started developing. I'm glad you brought that. That's funny you brought that. That I do have. <laughs> wow. So, Great. But, um, yeah, so, oh, well, here, let, let's get really crazy if you're going to go. Let, here, let's. <laughs> here, yeah, this guy. And this is the Star Guard. This was the um, oh wow, like the frame wow. of the monitor. Yeah, yeah. that that one around the monitor, right? And you, and you see, it was it was just flipped. Oh and yeah, then, yep. And then you can see you can see that the space, like that that grid was was cut on a on a separate piece. Where is that? <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, oh, and then, <laughs> and then that piece was taken, and then a negative was made of it, and then I took a ruby pen and just made all the stars. Oh, <laughs> and, then, cool. and then it was, and then it was reversed again. So now we, you had little, 
little st- little holes for the stars. <laughs> oh, wow. back in the days when cut and paste meant you cut and then you pasted. Literally, yeah. Right. <laughs> it was cut. Yeah. yeah, right, right. That Everything, is so clever. That's cool. Literally, you know, cut and paste, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, here, here. This is another little. I don't know something. Something, something from Star Guard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some little little <laughs> console. Here's some shit for you. Some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I can't tell you. It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> these games, a little miscellaneous ton of crap. What is that? I, it's one of the control panels, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, one of the, yeah, the spots with the control mm, panel. Yep. Yeah. You know, we, we used to call this cosmic plumbing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm looking at the uh, the Star Guards arcade now, Feels and right. yeah, it looks very very similar to what you just showed us. Yep. Well, sure. <laughs> so, so, it's the same thing. I hope so. <laughs> right, well, okay, so I guess I was misunderstanding. So the only the first piece was the Transformer characters. No, no, no. Um, it started developing. That that was how they started developing. Oh, so everything yeah. you actually drew were they were not the Transformer characters. No, no, was, no just just okay. just those 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 guys. Like I'm, like you know, and, and like I said, it was just toyed with briefly. And, and quite honest, I think it was a licensing problem that that it never was really yeah. revealed to me. You gotcha. know, that's, and of course, right. it's a need to know. Need to know you thing. Need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You. We just yeah. need you to draw right. what it's gonna be. Yeah. Shut up, you artist guy. But, you know, <laughs> just draw the robots we want to have. Really, and wipe the drool from your chin. You're scaring the children. <laughs> <laughs> just draw me some awesome. miscellaneous awesome robot guys. It is awesome. Fine. Okay, so actually, I have one more question before we move on to uh, the whole Mortal Kombat thing. Um, you mentioned earlier that you know you got to like test out all these games that you've done artwork for, or one way or another. And uh, what was your favorite game that you played? Uh, you know, I I have to say it, it's Satan's Hollow, not because it's necessarily a good playing game, or um, but because it it just has a special place in my heart. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I I, I can still look at that header or any piece of art from it. Oh, and I think I have some other stuff here, too. Oh. Yeah. Here, I have the uh, the cell sheet. Oh, look at oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zen cell, cell sheet. Nice. And, and a lovely dragon drawn by Doug Watson, my, my good friend. Oh, Doug cool. Watson. Nice. Yeah. Who I'm still very good friends with. Actually, I had a three-hour conversation with him about a week ago. Was that was that a leather chicken? Was that a leather chicken that Doug Watson drew there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if he used the leather chicken as a, as a basis for that, but uh, you know, then, then I found this too. They they did like a little yeah. pro. Oh, here you see yep. you can see the, uh, the yep. sort of see the demon on the side there. Yeah, yeah. the demon on the side there and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's the oh that's. That's the big so, one. That's it right there. Oh, that's amazing. So, uh, so um, yeah. that that became known as the jump shot demon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Two points>! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From downtown, I need two right. Kisro. Where's right. two Kisro when you need him? Damn it! <laughs> Satan from downtown. <laughs> from downtown. <laughs> that's my best Tim Kisro. God, he's a he's a riot. I love that guy. Oh, God. <laughs> Nice. So yeah, so for chickens, oh. jump shot demons, all that good stuff. Right, right. So here, what, here's something I, I dug out. I think you like too. Here it is. Well, that's awesome. Oh, the nice. Tapper. The tavern yeah, stuff. Very yeah. cool. That's right. Before we move on, we got to talk about. I know. Tapper. I know. Yeah. God, there's like so many tapper. things. A little bit about tapper. Yeah. Um. So this tapper happened during that transition from uh the the bat when we moved from the old building to the new building and the, and the Valley people came over, um, I started doing stuff for Tapper before they came over. So th- this, this piece here was, was just, just a prototype, just playing around. All we needed was, I knew that it was, um, they wanted old like brass. They wanted to look like a, like a turn of the century bar. Um, so that it, kind feel, of, it feels like the Cheers logo in a way, like right, it's got right, that right. Like, energy to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
I don't know if Tears was around then. Maybe. Yeah, right I, I don't know. I don't. I, I was trying to think, I think that too, but I, I it just Tears got that energy. Like late, yeah. late eighties or something. Maybe, yeah. maybe I was influenced. By, yeah, but it's got. I mean, really, you use, it's got a definite look. To it, it, does, it does. It's so, it's super cool. for sure. Right. Um, so we we're playing around with that idea and. and uh, um, the feel, they like the feel of it, but they decided not to go with the round thing. It was going to take up too much space. And, and, and there was actually for a while there, there was a, um, what, what made me do it round or in, or close in a circle is we had talked about having a marquee that had like a little, uh, you mm. know, like, like, like a little bow on the top, oh, nice. so, you know, yeah. kind of like a bar, like a little in a bar. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just have a little uh, cut out, you know. Right. Mm. So then, um, so then the, the ballet people all came over. And I got to work with Margaret Hudson, who's just amazing. She's she was such a talent, and she was so modest. And, um, I, I need to get in touch with her. I really, I really need to find out where. Um, I got her number from uh, um, Pat McMahon's wife. <laughs> you know? So I should look her up. So so Margaret, if you're watching, I'm gonna give you a call. See how you're doing. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you're she, a fan uh, of the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, she she's the one that did the Tapper character uh, okay. on the side, and then she did the, the back of the bar, and then, then uh, I ended up doing all the woodwork on, on the original. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Which, is, which they, there is a lot. There's quite a bit covering that, uh, Archie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. And, awesome. then, um, and then uh, Tony Ramoni, I think, painted the uh, the header, the header art. For it, you know, so so I mean, like a lot of that, that was very typical. Uh, that games were kind of, you know, just a collaboration of, of right. Of, and a lot of times too, it was like, well, who's who's up? Who's got some time? Oh, okay, I've got two days before this kicks in. Okay, great, you can, you know, do this panel. You know, right, right, right. Um, it, it really was. I mean, it was a lot of uh, just shooting from the hip and getting stuff done. And, uh, you know, you, you'd, you'd get it done, you'd walk into Paul's office, you go, nah. yeah, I changed that a little bit, but the way the rest is pretty good. So, can you get it done by the end of the day? I can. That, uh, uh, that original no. Tapper machine is, is another one that really stands out in the crowd. Not only do you have Plus. the wood grain, yeah. uh, but they, wow. they really went extra, extra, and they had, like, the, uh, the bar down at the bottom uh, by, the, by the feet, like a lot of bars would have it. Yeah, the footrest. It, had, right? it, had that, it came with that rail. That right. had the rail, yep. and we we had the the gold. Yep. It, it actually had you know cup holders. Yes, gold cup that, holders. That had gold, right. yeah. the brass around. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was yeah, really, yeah. designed really cool. all that, you know. So yeah, crazy, huh? Yeah, well, no, that's yeah. that's another one that was uh, you know it's it's like in a different way, like Satan's Hollow or Miss Pac Man or whatever. It really stands out. I really Picks out. Yeah, love that about Midway stuff, right. like early Midway stuff. They really right. tried to make the cabinet. Not just the game, but the cabinet, because the cabinet is drawing you in, right? Oh, the yeah, cabinet yeah. is your point yeah. of purchase. The cabinet is your 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 trailer. This is everything. This is you know. Yeah, you don't get a preview of a game. Yeah, you just walk so, into a arcade and you look at it and you yeah, go, well, okay, you I want to try that. There? Why are you gonna pick yeah. this one out of the crowd or right. whatever? Oh. It's, it's I, a, I got a funny story about uh, Tapper uh, when they when they made the uh, um, cell sheet for Tapper. They had to have the photograph in this bar, and they had gotten a bar in Wrigleyville. Um, that uh, uh, we we could have from at six a.m. <laughs> okay, it was on a Sunday morning. Okay, so so the thing was that uh, they wanted to, you to bring as many people as you could bring down to this photo shoot at this bar in Wrigleyville at six in the morning on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Damn. And so um. so if you ever see that picture, you know, and and. Uh, Dave, the art director, was in the front, and he had two hired two like hot little hottie models, and they're playing the game in the front with Dave, and, and then everybody's the, and I'm way way I'm like the last guy in the bag, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. like this this big in the picture, and I remember uh, when we got there, they're like all the Budweiser you can drink. Well, you know, I was young and dumb, so you know we'd already stayed up all night partying. <laughs> Why go to bed and get up? Let's, it's, just yeah, don't right go to bed. Close, just stay awake. Close enough to. I'm looking at. I'm. I'm looking at the flyer. It's. It's easily findable on. Uh, on the Google. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. There's, there's a guy way in the back. Yep. With like kind of a salmon color. Yep. yep. There's. That's me. <laughs> you, got big, you got a big mustache and. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> total. Total eighties gay porn mustache. Yeah, totally. <laughs> 
Very, very, very gay porn. I was just going to say that. No, you got, so you That's got, wicked. That's the first thing that popped in my head. No, I can two. say that. You can't say that. So you have the two hotties playing the game yeah, next right. to the asshole from every 80s ski movie. Right, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> What's your really his name, Dave? You're Dave. Isn't world, that I funny? Mean. That was funny. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're like, were... you're like Paul. Do you ski a lot? Do you know any asshole blonde asshole? <laughs> do you know any blonde yeah. asshole? <laughs> and, 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 and you know, and it was really, what really funny is that like he was the most like chic, uh, urban, you know, uh, guy. He, he definitely. Not that that character, but that that's kind of how who he looked like. That's so funny. And he was a fish out of water at ballet. He really, I mean, his whole background was advertising and the agencies, and you could see he was just like, "What the hell?" Because <laughs> you know, what, and I didn't know any different. I mean, at that point, I, my first job was at a, a sign company, and I, I and another guy were the only, we were the art department, you know. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about agency life or anything at that point. So when I got to Bally, I figured that's the way everything was done. Well, when I got to the agencies, and it was like completely different. And I saw, I saw where Dave was coming from. And yeah. The agencies, they're, they're, that's, it's, you know, by the book, man, you know, and they don't care how many times you have to redo it to make it right. Mm -hmm. Do it. Yeah. Do it again. Pay for it. Do it again. We'll and pay for like, it. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. I gotta be honest. We made more money off of the redos and the changes. Yeah, you know? that's why you screwed yourself when you did such a good job the first time around, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I learned. You're I the learned. comps. You're like my damn comps are perfect. I need to. <laughs> I need to get worse. What that am happened, I doing? <laughs> that happened. With, you know, that was the thing. Like airbrushing them, make them all look nice and. Well, okay. Here's the thing, too. I was doing a lot of food illustration, and that's a tricky. It was a really, really tricky thing, you know. Uh, it doesn't take much to make, have food look crappy, right? You know, old or shitty, <laughs> right? Okay. Oh, food right. photography is the hardest photography there is, you know, to make it look appetizing and yummy, and you know, like it just came out of the oven, and you know, none of that is stuff that just came out of the oven. It's all, you know. It's been they sitting in a shooting okay. stage right, yeah. for hours and hours or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you see an ice cream, it's mashed potatoes with food coloring. That, you know, it's, none of that is real. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so I mean, but that's what we did. We did. We did all that. I, I remember being on a set a plenty of times. Um, it, I remember it was a, um, it's like a, 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 a frozen pop or something or other, and uh, I had to keep. We, we would take a watered down white paint. And hit it, and then and then we would take like uh, one of those air blast things, and uh, but the the air that came out of it was like super cold. So we we put the uh, the watercolor on it, and then we'd hit it, and it would get frosty real quick, and we'd take the shot, you know. <laughs> wow. Like oh, it looks like it's a fro it's frozen. It's perfect. <laughs> the crazy it's crap. You, oh yeah, it is some crazy crap. Yeah. In uh in college, we had a big, huge wall size poster of uh, a glass of Guinness, and the. Yeah. Guinness looks beautiful and, and perfect and you want to drink it and sure. all this stuff. And you know, it's got all this condensation on the glass. And one of my roommates had learned a whole bunch of this stuff, like you're saying about like the truth of food photography, yeah. food photography. And he's like, well, what I learned is, you know, that's not condensation. They, they just spray it with like corn syrup. So all I can think of every time I see this picture now is like, Oh my God, that glass looks sticky. Right. Right. Once you know, you peel back the curtain, you're like, ah, oh, it's covered in syrup. It's covered in corn. No, yeah. Nobody wants to know how the sausage is made. That's very. <laughs> they only want to hit you with it. Right. <laughs> and hopefully not in the face. Well played. Well, oh, well played. That's to a, bring that that's around. That's a great be, segue. Oh. That's a great wow. segue to Mortal Kombat. If oh, I've ever yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, what, what a great. What a great comedic uh, mechanic. That was well played, sir. No, thank you. Thank you, sir. It all comes around. Yes. If, if, you listen to, if you listen to the show long enough, all our same jokes get used more than once. Yeah, we're only clever <laughs> once, and then we just keep doing it. Right. We're like the, we're like the family guy at podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if it works, keep yeah, yeah. Just speed the horse. I don't care if it's dead. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so, what else am I bring here? Okay. 
Uh, oh, I, I uh, had the. I brought, oh, I here's the sausage right hunter. here. Yeah, I found the spy <laughs> hunter. Uh, oh, cool. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, the nice. spy hunter little flyer there. Right, yeah. So, okay, so we keep saying Mortal Kombat, but you, you keep bringing out other awesome stuff. So, well, what did you do for spy hunter specifically? The, the control panel, right? The control oh, panel. The control panel. Yeah, yeah. That, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay here, my, my, here, this is my swan song at Bally. Okay. Midnight Marauders. Oh, Whoa. I saw that one on the list. Okay. Uh, Whoa. I heard of that. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, cool. Oh, uh, uh, you know, it was a... It looks, uh, it looks very sexy. I mean, I got to be honest. Yeah, it, it didn't work for shit. So what it was was a shooting game. Oh, no, I got to show you this too. Um, see this guy? This, where is he? This, this yep. guy right here? Okay, yep. okay. Yep. <laughs> He's the photographer's assistant. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. No. Here's how that happened. Um, they had hired somebody, pro probably Dave, you know, the, the bad guy from every... <laughs> right, every ski, ski movie. Ski movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so, you know, so and they tried to dress him up like this, and he looked like, hey, Buffy, I've got this great suspicion leather jacket. Let's go down to the arcade. Care you know? for milkshake. <laughs> right, 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 and that's, a, that's exactly hey, what it hey, looked like. Hiya, dull know? face, how you doing? So, like, for after an hour and a half of shooting the, this guy, we're going, this, nothing is working, you know? So here's the assistant. He's just picking shit up. And they're going... Get in the get you 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 look scary. Get in there. Two shots done <laughs> out the door. Yeah, Goodbye. yeah that's a photographer's assistant. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. so this wasn't a video game. This was a, a right a, a rifle range. Yes, game. they they decided they wanted to go <laughs> retro. And it is funny <laughs> to think that in '84 we we're like going to go retro. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> With a shooting game that had pop-up targets, mechanical mm -hmm. stuff, you know, and, and uh, I suggested that we have a, a black light and we have a uh, um, a an actual 3D base with like you know. Uh, craters and all kinds of stuff. And they said, "Can you make that?" And well, I, I actually have a, um, a ceramics design degree in ceramics design and engineering. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so I was like, yeah, yeah you I can make that. I can Hell do yeah, that, man. Ceramics are my, that, that, that's my that's my love, you know. So, so I made it out of ceramics, and, and we made little pinholes in it. And we made it uh, into a vacuum form, and he vacuum formed all, all these these bases. And I used to have a uh, boy, I had about ten of them. And uh, I think they got thrown out during the, I don't know when. I can't find them to save my life. I wish I had them now. Oh, uh, I, I, okay. Uh, I eventually, it was hard to find a picture of what the inside of the thing actually looked like. There's some good oh, videos okay. on YouTube that show people playing it. And you oh, can get okay. a good idea. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, quite yeah. cool looking. You the know? artwork on the side is really cool. Oh, thanks. I had a ball doing it. I really did. And, and I'm telling you, I was, I really threw in, you know, it, <laughs> Okay, I knew it was my swan song. You know. Okay. Uh, basically, everybody was was you know getting the cam uh, at uh, uh, every every Friday was Black Friday. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. You know, and it was mostly the factory. But when you'd go out there and you'd see whole big sections just gone. Like, oh crap. Yeah. You know, right. You, you're, you know, you, you can't help but think. Mm -hmm. Sure, the writing's on the wall. It's the, oh, yeah. Yeah, the, That's the not death knell. You're bell hearing tolls. it. Tolls for yes, me. it is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So um, when Paul came to me with this game, he goes, hey, we got this wacky retro game, you know, a shooting game. What do you say? Want to give it a shot? I said, yes, I do. Because I thought, well, maybe, maybe I can, you know, make a big splash with this thing. And they'll yeah. say, hey, this guy, we need to keep this guy, you know. Um, but that is not what happened, of course. I got done with it, and they were like, "Hey, great! You go. <laughs> Thanks so what? much. You've been a peach. See you later." <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I mean, that that's is... like that's a hell of a lot of work on your part, you know, as, is. above yeah. and beyond, um, you know, doing the yeah, artwork right. and everything, yeah. like to do all the sculpting and ceramics. Yeah, right. Like, that's, that's right. And I did that really... on my own time. You know, oh, I, shit. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, because I because I thought, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm I'm building equity in my keeping this job right yeah you know? right right exactly. right so i mean it was, it was, it was it foolish to do. to do so and looking back on it obviously you know hindsight's oh. 2020 but you know, I, but you I know it 
There's, there's no wasted work though. I mean, you know, no. it's, it's out there in the but, universe and, and that, that side really is, is spectacular. Like right. those, the, the creations, mm-hmm. I mean, you got these like, it's all sci-fi for, for those who don't know. It's sci-fi. You have these like armored aliens and there's a bunch of starfighters just kind of in a dogfight on top. And the characters look incredibly unique. Like I, I can't even say yeah. like, Oh, that looks like the doom guy or, Oh, that looks like Darth Vader or, Oh, like no, no, that that looks a hundred percent unique. It's Thank unique. you. I, I I really tried, you know, and and the thing there too is a couple of the um, it went through a lot. Boy, I wish I I brought all those up. Um, I have a bunch of prototype characters that I went through. And that's probably a half dozen prototype characters. Oh, wow. Very, wow. very first ones I did. Um, it was suggestions from the boys upstairs. Um, they look kind of. Arab, okay, and uh, yeah, we were like, "Are you sure this is right. where you want to go with this?" Some of the bad guys, the Arab, you know, yeah, and it was like, you know, Iran Contra was happening. Yeah. We've always, <laughs> let's face it, it's always been a mess. You know, we're always gonna, yeah, but like things. distasteful even back then. That's surprising. Oh, yeah. I the eighties yeah. was was not a kind decade, really. I mean, no, oh no, no. no. <laughs> no. You know, okay, so um, so I went through a whole bunch, and then then uh, I made a couple of them, and they were a little bit Cylon esque. Oh yeah, see, yeah, not these guys, not the final. Oh no, no, not 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 these. Well, that, that, these guys are the result of an evolution of Love it. you know a drawing, and uh, I actually should, should have dug those out. I've I've got all those downstairs in the basement too. There were about maybe six different characters that we went through before it became this guy. Well, you know, you know, Paul, if, if you want to take like, even if they're just snapshots with your phone and send them over to us, we'd love oh, yeah. to post them on the group. Oh, and absolutely. Yeah. Really like very, very interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah, any, anything you're comfortable sharing, we'd love yeah. to get you more exposure and just share that oh, history. Oh, Cause that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 They're just pencil sketches, you know, the, uh, of, yeah. of these characters. But uh, so it was kind of funny because actually uh, um, my, Kind of my almost day to day job at at Valley Midway was to do um, color comps for games that uh, were test games. You know, comp. We we had no idea what they were going to be. We had this game, uh, Zodiac. Um, <laughs> so I had the two characters uh, that were rejects. Actually, the one of the ones that were kind of Cylon esque. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I literally had two hours to throw together a header. You know, so I I, I did like a funky word treatment of zodiac and stuck these two guys on you know mirror image of each other on <laughs> you know, i already had them right and, and like whatever door, you got out the door went. and that was the thing it, it, i did a lot of you know two and three hour header color header things for one of a kind games that would go to some arcade and they would do a test you know run for maybe a couple of days to see if it, it you know made any money and then they bring it back and See if they're going to keep it or develop it or not, or not. Yeah, you know, I, I probably did. Oh, 30, 40, I don't know how many of those, you know, different games that, you know, most of them never went anywhere. Not, not that I knew of. Right. You know, huh. But it was great because, you know, as I'm developing stuff for other games, I got all these leftover characters and stuff. So I yeah. started using all yeah. the stuff. Really, because I mean, really, it, it, the artwork was, it was almost like throwaway because it was a one of a kind. It's just going to go out for testing and it's going to come back yeah. and it's going to be forgotten. A lot, a lot of the, the art that I have of those games is I, I pulled it off of the header once it came back from testing. Otherwise, it Oh yeah. Out. Cause yeah, you're not going to get that back. Oh, you're right? never going to get it back. You know, and a lot yeah. of times it did get thrown out before I got there, you know? Um, but that was kind of my, my, my main job, you know? So uh, I, I, I made sure I utilized, you know, and that was the thing too, is, is when you come up with something amazing, you have these characters already, they're like, how did you do that? Two hours. <laughs> that's why I'm. That's you're like you the, just pay me the big ass. bucks. I keep it coming, you know. You pay yeah. me the big yeah. bucks. I also <laughs> found a, a really uh, high resolution scan of the Midnight Mar- Marauders flyer that you showed us with uh, the the torpy assistant guy there. <laughs> look, trying to look really, really badass. He actually looks like a. He looks a little like Sting. Like he's really trying to like a little too hard to look like Sting. Actually. He's like Sting from Dune. Really into this game. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he looks like. Yeah. And, and, and he came complete with attitude. We didn't even have to ask him to pour that out of him. He was just pissed off. We're like, wait, just stay that angry. I don't right, understand. Right, you know? I have to say, I don't understand his stance in this at all. His, uh, his legs don't make any sense. I don't know why human would stand in that position doing what he's doing. <laughs> he's like riding a horse. I don't know what's happening. He's riding an invisible horse. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, his legs are weird, man. <laughs> right. So yeah. odd. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hit him up, you know. Yeah, but yeah. but it was funny because because uh, you know he, he did he looked like he just came off the, the set of uh, uh, um oh my god I can't think Mel Brooks no oh, not Mel Brooks oh Blazing Saddles <laughs> no uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god baseballs <laughs> no forget I said Mel Brooks <laughs> no not not Mel, Mel Brooks. Gibson is what I meant to say oh, <laughs> <Ben> Max. <laughs> thank you. <Ben> Max. <laughs> Mad Max. Okay. There we this go. interview is over. <laughs> Done. <laughs> he screwed up Mel Brooks he and Mel lost his Simpson. fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to go for one F bomb. And okay. <laughs> hey, we said go for it. Uh, yeah, tell us how you landed a Mortal Kombat gig. Okay, <laughs> that's kind of a funny, wacky coincidence too um okay so when uh the art department was disbanded and everybody went their different separate ways they had all this equipment and stuff they were getting rid of and greg ferris uh who was the head of the valley guys and was my, my boss too uh called up all the valley people and kind of forgot to call me because we were the midway guys and, and, and understandably there was always that weird little division, right? Like we were always those midway guys, and, and, and there was it was a kind of a weird feeling too that we, you know, we always. I remember Larry Daybeck and I was always sitting, oh, we're the midway guys, and <laughs> <don't know>, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever we get forget forgotten on something. Oh my God, we're the freaking midway guys again. And so because Bally was pinball, right? Yes, right. Yeah. And then they merged right. before you got there. No, actually, oh, oh, yeah, the companies did. Yeah. The yeah. companies did, but the department merged a couple months after yeah. I started. So, and then, then that, they, they all came together. And that was just, actually, that was an amazing situation. I probably learned more in that two years being in that, that environment with all, you know, these amazing world-class artists. I know, I know I learned more in that two years than I ever did in four years of college. Yeah. Isn't that the way, though? Easily. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Work experiences. Yeah. It it made. It, I gotta say, it really it made me. It made my my career was working there because the experience that I got there was just I couldn't have got it anywhere. Where the hell are you gonna get that? It's just yeah. crazy, you know. Okay, so now, uh, <clears throat> so so Greg forgot to call me, and they're giving these desks away, and uh, so Tony. Uh, now a couple of years goes by, and uh, Tony Ramoni calls me up, and he says. And I'm not being racist, but this is how Tony talked. And like, okay, Tony, you've been here for forever. How can you not get, you know, American syntax? What's going on? Okay. So Tony calls him and he goes, Hey, Paul, I'm going to move back to Italy. And uh, I got a, I got the, a drawing table that, we, you know, I'm not trying to be racist. This is how Tony really talked. Hey, man. <laughs> I swear. Okay. And we used to like, he used to say any any word that started with a with a vowel, he put an H in front of it. Oh, I really like a apple, you know. <laughs> okay, so he calls me up and he's he's got the, the desk. He's going, I'm moving back to Italy and you know, the, uh, would you like my desk? And I said, Well, that's cool. And, and he goes, uh, what well, he goes, We have room for it since you got that other one. I said, What other one? He goes, you know, when we got these desks. And I went, what do you mean? What you so he's explained the whole thing. I said, that did not happen. <laughs> I missed the call. What happened? And he was like, uh, <laughs> 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 well, well, I got a desk now, don't I, damn it? <laughs> so, booyah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I went and got the desk. And, and, and we're, I remember when I went and picked it up, we were laughing about it. And, and, and uh, I said, well, I have to give Greg shit about this, you know, and I didn't, you know, 
But I was joking. I didn't care. You know, I was like, hey, I got this cool desk, whatever. No. So now years go by, okay, and Greg calls me up and says, hey, we got this great game. Or a fighting game, Dragon Attack, come on down, you know, uh, and, and meet so it was like uh, Ed Boon and John Tobias and uh, um, uh, Jack Hager and Greg Ferris and me, an initial meeting. So we do the whole meeting and uh, then we get done at the end, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm packing up everything and everybody kind of leaves and I'm following my stuff and Greg's standing by the door. And, and I started walking out and, and I said, hey, thanks. You know, for bringing me in on this, it looks like it's going to be a really fun job. It's going to be pretty awesome. And he goes, "Cool, I'm glad glad you can make it." He goes, "I hope this makes up for the desk." <laughs> wow! And I did. You know, you got to remember, this is years later, so I'm just like, mm, "All right, okay." You know, take two steps and went, "Bing!" Desk. The <laughs> desk. I <laughs> remember. Oh, oh. And uh, so now, you know, put it all together. Tony called him. Yeah. He, he remember this. Oh my, and you know, and he had it's like, I still, go, I still owe him for that desk mishap. I gotta, I gotta bring yeah. him in on dragon attack. And, and, and Greg, Greg, Greg was like, he was kind of a soft spoken guy, uh, you know, for a drummer, you know, <laughs> he was a pretty, you know, pretty soft spoken guy. Uh, and, but, but he, he, you can see he had that shitty eating grin on his face. Like, you know, he was like something, you know, something's going, what's, <laughs> what is going on with this guy, you know? And then he, he delivers his, you know, dry as toast, you know. Well, the desk. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. So what a son. crazy legacy, like, to, to have it in <laughs> on that desk, right? Yeah. Like, that's wild. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah and, 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 oh, I wish I could turn this around. The desk is here. <laughs> oh, my God. That's right, right over there, yeah. The oh, desk? Sweet. The oh desk is there. The desk, yeah, it's right over here. Uh, so. <laughs> desk, cool. Well, well, okay, this morning on my, on my Facebook page, I posted uh, some pictures of my old house in Woodridge. Um, mm -hmm. My neighbor, <laughs> it was flooding up, and, and that was always a problem on that, that property. My neighbor posted pictures of it, and kind of just, you know, mentioned, yeah, that's where I made the Mortal Kombat artwork. You know? Yeah. And in two hours, I had over 200 <laughs> likes, and oh my god! You know? I bet, like, oh crap! People, people are still into this. People yeah, are all right, about that. Right. You know? <clears throat> right. You mentioned Mortal Kombat, and people come running for sure. Oh well, yeah. the very first event that I did was at a place called uh, Hollywood. Uh, um, uh, it's a theater, it's a, you know, and, and it's one of those, uh, uh, you know, where you sit down, and you eat, and you get food, and, and it's sure. yeah. Hollywood Boulevard, great, great place, amazing place in Woodridge. And um, I remember mentioning offhand, yeah, it's kind of funny. I created the artwork for Mortal Kombat about a mile and a half from this very spot. And there was like a go, <gasps> you know, from everybody. Right. It almost scared Audible me. Gas. They all went, I was like, what the fuck? Wow. <laughs> You gotta be careful when you say that, man. Like, you know, you know, you could be saying that on like a public transportation system or on like a bus. You might freak somebody out. <laughs> gotta right. watch out. Well, you know, you know. so yeah, so I was like, oh, I better not say the address or people would be digging up plants yeah. and or yeah, I mean, that's like and the, taking uh... pictures on the front lawn. <laughs> I like those neighbors still. I still talk to those people. Right. Don't mess with <laughs> them. <laughs> it's like there's, you know, the, the house that Edgar Allan Poe wrote, The Raven, is allegedly someplace in Philly, but also New York claims that they have one as well because they're not quite sure, like, where, but I know it's like, no, it's this one. Right. No, 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 we, no, we, got a, we got a Poe house. house. No, no, no. This is where the Mortal Kombat logo dress. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, in the, in so, the back room. Back, yeah. back down. Well, maybe someday because, you know, I mean, not to <clears throat> understate this particular piece of art, not blowing smoke up your butt or anything, man, but like this is one of the top most recognizable symbols in all of video games. I mean, yeah, it's like prob uh, probably. I mean, arguably. I mean, for yeah, sure. You, you know, got, you got yeah. Pac-Man, just right. Pac-Man. You got you got like Mario stuff, like the mushroom, and you you there. The Mortal Kombat dragon <clears throat> is in the like top three or four or five because like everybody in the world can recognize it instantly. So, oh, well, and of well, course, well. it's in the, it's in the the movies as well and stuff like that. So, right, I mean, that right. is it's still to this day first foot forward. If it's Mortal Kombat, it's gonna have a version of that dragon. Right. Now, now, I'm glad you brought that up, and I want to take this moment to, to actually 
uh, say this too. And I just posted this on my, my page today. Mm -hmm. um, th there seems to be like a little bit of discrepancy about like who did what. And, mm -hmm. and I know at, at uh, uh, when I, when I do interviews or I'm at uh, a convention or something, they'll say, so what was it like to create the uh, Mortal Kombat, you know, logo? I did not create the Mortal Kombat logo. All I did was illustrate it. All right. I, I want to make that totally clear. So, so and all that existed that. before I showed up. Uh, I was a freelancer, and they brought me in. And that, that was that was totally John Tobias. You know, he he had that that it's it's in his artwork. The comps that he gave me, to, you know, that 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 dragon is in those comps. So, I mean, it existed before that when it was Dragon Attack, and actually, it was a it had another name before Dragon Attack too. It was a it was a kung fu fighting style that was hard to pronounce and remember. Oh, so wow. you know, it didn't last very long. But, but that dra yeah. but the but the dragon is a kung fu fighting style. That's what they told me, <clears throat> and they gave me a picture of of it carved in stone, and it's it's and it's from an ancient temple somewhere. I, I wish I had that picture. That I don't have. I looked around. I thought I had that, but I don't. Mm -hmm. um, it's exactly, I mean, it's almost exactly like the logo, you know, it really is it's pretty close. Mm. Um, we just stylized it more and it became what it was. But, but again, I, I can't, you know, I just want to say, I, I just illustrated the stuff, sure, you know, right. it, it's like people don't understand that a lot of these, you know, everything, everything, advertising, games, all this <sighs> stuff, there's maybe there's one guy that's a designer and then there's another guy that's an illustrator. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's a guy that's right. just the ink guy, and there's another guy that's just the color guy. It was like, like okay, like comic books. Yeah. You know, there's a pencil guy, there's the ink guy, and there's a the color guy. They're three right. completely different jobs, but you know, all all of them need to be spot on to nail. Right. That's kind of what happened here. So in this case, um, so in the in the post that you're you're referring to, we were all we all read that today actually yeah. in, in preparation mm -hmm. we uh we saw the the images that you've posted and stuff and and it does you you can clearly see that in the uh, original tobias artwork where he was drawing the side of the uh, the side of the machine there's that johnny cage doing that jump kick and then right. there's the dragon so he basically said to you what did he say like here's the dragon take this take this dragon head but make it into a circle is is like what oh you mean for the logo Oh no! I mean, it was it was it was all kind. Of, uh, um, seems to me it was. I, you know, that's the thing too is I can't specifically remember every little how yeah. how everything you know came mm -hmm. to be. I remember it was the very first thing. You know, that was the very first thing that had to be done, and I remember that. You know, um, and and you saw. I mean, I had that ink line that was out. That's in the oh, the green ink. Or, or, or well, it's it's black, but it's you know, oh, okay. kind of a greenish shine. Yeah, he, it's just a, you know, photography. But uh, <clears throat> it's on on that frosted vellum, and then we'd make a uh, a PMT, uh, you know, copy of that and clean it up and fill in all the pinholes, and then that was the master that everything was made from. Um, yeah, you got yourself a Mona Lisa, man. Like that right there on that on that vellum paper or whatever it is. Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, <laughs> okay. Uh, you you ever run into to financial trouble? You you put that up at like uh, <laughs> Sotheby's or something, and and okay. Oh my God. Have you been talking to my wife, sir? Because I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> this serious. Like... Honey, you got to sell all your old artwork. They're worth a fortune. <laughs> I mean, that, right, right. <laughs> Steve, if you can suggest to him to sell the artwork, <laughs> that know? one uh, working in at the can... end was so only he'll just, remember it because he's a little dense, you know. <laughs> okay, so I just I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. The, the the question i still am yeah. feeling like i'm not sure so the part of the post that you posted it had tobias's artwork it had it had the color of the side of the machine it has johnny cage is kicking down it's got the dragon so do you remember coming up with the face of that dragon or did they just say draw a dragon because it is in his artwork here but i'm just trying to figure out like which came first was it your dragon head or was it his dragon head that he said, well, take this exact Oh, his dragon. Oh, yeah, oh so yeah, it was yeah. his dragon. You turned oh, oh, it into yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Very and iconic I just, face. I, I, yeah, I, I pretty much, you know, cleaned okay. it up and, you know. Okay. Get, that you answers know. the question. I think right. that, yeah, because when right. you say, like, you didn't design it, you illustrated it. No, no. That, and, 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 you know, I can see how people would, would think that. I mean, even my wife was kind of like, oh, I thought you did. I said, no, mm. 
to. Gotcha. And, you know, even my stepson was like, I thought so too. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Obviously, there's a problem here. If you guys are thinking, you live with me, you know, right. we, we got to straighten this out. Yeah. I, I, right. You know, quite honestly, I've had a lot of artwork stolen from me. I've been cheated a lot of times, but you can't. So you want to do your due diligence, yeah. make sure yeah, man, you know, I know the credit, that feels like. credit that's goes shitty. where it needs to go. Gotcha. Right? You, you drew this design, but it was based on a design that was entirely thought up by Ed Boon. Right? Or, or Tobias. John, John well, John Tobias. Tobias yeah. John Tobias. Yeah. 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 And, and Ed, I mean, <laughs> guys, I, I didn't really deal with Ed very much. Um, mostly Jack Hager. Mm. Uh, um, as far as the, the actual nuts and bolts of, of producing the artwork, it was Jack Hager now because you know uh, Jack. Jack's just a stone cold awesome artist, just amazing artist. And, you know, uh, he he had just as much time in as as I did doing production artwork. So you know, we were all talking on the same level. You know, right? It was great work with Jack. Just an amazing guy. He always had had fantastic. It, it, the great thing about Jack was was uh, if you you came in with something and you think it was like. You did like the coolest thing ever, and he'd look at it and he'd tell you something that made it like ten times cooler. <laughs> You're like, shit, how did I not see that? But then, but then after he said it, I could not not see it. I couldn't yeah. unsee right. Can't what he see just it. said. And of course, he was always right. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, again, you know, whatever it was that that I did on Mortal Kombat that made it what it is, I had a hell of a lot of help and a lot of you know. Uh, push in the right direction and a lot, a lot of uh, you know, changes, directions. You know, we zig, we zag. It, it got to where yeah. it was, but it, it, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a team effort and process. Sure. I can't stress and that. it's, it's really great that you can be so straightforward and and humble about it and everything. And you want to make sure that everybody's getting their credit because, yeah. uh, like you know, you said it already, but you know, you've had problems it, art well, or right. I, I was more upset that there was a possibility that i was being misunderstood or that right. i was you know claiming to have more going on that I, I than what i was i, I did not want to come off as, as a fraud and, you know right, right. It, it, it's a big deal to, i mean you know, okay Eddie, you don't last 36 years freelancing unless you have integrity right. yeah yep. Yep. Unfortunately, you can screw over when you have integrity, but you know I gotta look at myself in the mirror in the morning. Sure. So. Uh, well, that's yeah. great. That's great. I th I think it's awesome that um you're putting putting everything out there, and we're definitely uh, we did the same. I shared the post uh, on the on the group today. I think you saw oh, that. Thanks, man. And uh, and you know it's it's I think it's just beyond fascinating, really, like to see this stuff. Right. And I just I, my favorite part is uh, on the dragon attack pictures where you you scribbled in. Pen, uh, Ingve J. Malmstein album Rising Force. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, That's the best part. Is that there? Okay. okay. <laughs> At the end of that meeting, yeah. uh, I've got all this stuff sitting in front of me, and 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 really, it was like an hour long. We talked about everything, you know, that they had talked about, and you know what. Uh, and they, they covered a lot of stuff that, you know, here's what we decided to do, but then we decided not to do that. But, you know, it's like they had to fill me in. It was really, it was about an hour and a half. And I'm writing furiously, and my pen dies. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! So I'm shoveling all the stuff up, and and uh, I remember Ed goes, "Oh, almost forgot. We're, we're changing the name to Mortal Kombat." <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that's a big deal. Oh, okay. oh no, it's with a K. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a, okay. So you see, you see the thing I, I wrote. Yeah, Mortal you can see the C. And the C is gone. Yeah, because yeah, right, right, right. yeah, because I wrote it, and he goes with a K. Like, oh, of course. Well, what was that? <laughs> what an idiot I must be. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I wrote it. Yeah. So I write the K. So then I'm. So now after he says that, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna get home. I'm gonna think it's uppercase and lowercase. I better write this whole. So I. So that's why it's written out in all caps underneath it. And and I wrote it in green marker because my pen died. And all, all there was was a green marker on the table. You know? <laughs> so I wrote a green marker. <laughs> you work with what you got. You know? So I shuffled all my stuff together and, and, I, and I went out to my, I'm a freelancer, so I went out to my car and I'm taking home. I'm sitting in the parking lot and uh, I'm looking at all the stuff and this song comes on the radio by, you know, by in my, in my Malmsteen. I was just kick ass and I'm like yeah no I had a pen that worked in the car so I, I, 
So in order to remember it, I wrote down I, you know, whatever I had to hap happen to write it down. And, you know, that's what I had. It was just <laughs> like, this is my scrap paper. I just don't want right. to forget this kick-ass Yngwie song. You just song. like the song, right. so right. you're like, oh, I got to look this <laughs> album up later. Did okay. you, did you, have, did you like, take the pen and like, strap it to your – Around, around your shoulder and did like the whole twirl thing and then like <laughs> take, take the paper and I'm like flashy you know you don't you don't think of that stuff as you're working on the on the stuff and it's like well this may be someday this is going to be you know like a piece of like gaming art history right yeah you know yeah. nobody yeah. thought of that gotta look yeah, up. Actually, that i'll tell you why they didn't think of it that, that's why there's that's why I'm the only one that has, this, you know, this stuff is because I'm the only one that decided to keep it all. It chucked it all. I can't believe it. Everybody, how did that happen? I mean, That's not, terrible. Yeah, yeah I no, mean, it yeah. sucks. Terrible. It's so much history gone. Oh, oh, just, yeah, just right. terrible. I, I know. I'm, I'm glad I did keep. I mean, I, even when I was working there, I, re I remember thinking, this shit's gonna get thrown out, man. Yeah. Stuff, so not keep this oh, I'm glad you didn't throw it out. I think it's history. Great. I think it's worthwhile. I think it well, belongs in a museum someday. Uh, just a little bit of background on us. We uh, years ago uh, had a um, about, I think we did like four or five episodes. It was all on YouTube. It was like the first incarnation of our podcast. And uh, what we had done is a series, uh, we called it Of Paint and Pixels. And we had a whole series on video game, uh, not arcades, but video game box art. And it was all about all about the box art, uh, comparing different regions and how you know uh, something in Japan looks very different than something in England and looks different than something here, and all the stuff. And I I will tell you that these are like very much pieces of art to us, the things that are iconic to us. That growing up we saw a million times. Uh, we tried pretty hard to find uh, some artists, and it is very difficult to find names uh, for people who oh, did yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's, they're just not credited. It's very it's different. Just, you know, a freelancer, like they paid somebody, they did it. And, you know, you have this incredibly yeah. iconic piece of artwork that you can't put a name to. Yeah, yeah it, it, it becomes very uh, hard. I was yeah, notorious for, uh, for sneaking my, my initials into this. We weren't supposed to. You know, we weren't supposed to sign anything. We weren't supposed to, you know. And uh, I remember Paul Ferris uh, he had a real problem with that, and he signed everything. And uh, I remember he would he would tell us, and we'd have our meetings, and he'd, and his attitude was always, um, "Don't get caught signing it." <laughs> I say didn't don't say it. don't sign it. Yeah. Don't get caught signing it. Right. Right. <laughs> so if you if you hide it, and you hide it well enough that nobody sees it until it goes into production, and, and then then it's like. It's, gotcha. you know, it's in gold. Yeah, it's right, casting yeah, gold right. now, baby. You can't. It's just too expensive to go backwards. Right. That's what we got to keep it. Is your is your uh, and are your initials in uh, Satan's Hollow? Oh hell yeah. <laughs> where yes, are they? Yes, they are. Here, let me show you where. <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah, where is it? Um, Okay, oh I, I, I can't see it here. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, 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 that's man. great. That's, that's, that's so clever, though, to hide your initials. Like, because you've got to take credit for that. Yeah, um, you have to. Yeah. And, they, and so, the fact that they don't want you to just bite, you know, it, it blows. It, it sucks bit. that that's how it is. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah pen. There's pen. I found the pen. There it is. <laughs> right. There it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so that was the thing is, you know, you always try to be sneaky and hide it, you know, uh, there was no way to do things. I mean, they're, they're, it's much different now. Everybody's getting credit for everything. And, you know, I, I got, I got a buddy that's an actor and, and he's, he's on uh, Chicago, Chicago fire. That's it. And I think they just got oh, yeah, yeah. Syndic syndicated or something. So he was like thrilled really, really like, after five seasons or something. Get and, uh, he, he'll be making money off of that for forever. And I'm like, wow. The old days, nobody that never happened. None of that, you know. That, now you got you got unions and everybody looking out for, you know, your interests, and they, they realize that you know you this wouldn't have happened without you know this extreme amount of talent that's brought in. It doesn't matter whether you're a freelancer or not. You you know you you your input, you know, changed whatever the output of that you know that product was yeah. and made it what it is. That's that has worth. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You 
No, never. Back then, they didn't want you to sign it. And they'd rather you didn't acknowledge you existed. Yeah, they didn't acknowledge. Like, you're just, there, there you're just a number. Like, a credit anywhere. There's not a credit in the in the instruction manual. There's no credit on the, no. you know, <laughs> anywhere. It, yeah. it, it's like these names are just who did this we don't know we want to know and uh and we just we, we even contacted uh one of our hosts the, the only host who's not here because there's four of us mm-hmm. actually took it upon himself to contact uh the company capcom oh. and uh and was trying to figure out who had done the uh the cover of uh ghosts and goblins and uh yeah we couldn't we, we they didn't they said they didn't know and I'm sure it was more like the person at the who answered the email just didn't actually feel like going to look in the in the deep records or but something. Yeah, maybe but maybe they I'm maybe sure they, they didn't even record it. I don't have know. Some record of it, but yeah, well, yeah. They, I mean, they said they said sorry, we don't we don't keep that information. <laughs> like, are you kidding that's me? Really sad though. That's, <laughs> like, that's sad. Like, and, and here's the thing, you know, and they'll say that to you like that's an acceptable response right right like, like oh no it's just we just don't have that information i'm like but yeah. it's your artwork it's your product it's you hired somebody at some point you know you had a contract with them or i mean yeah either they were in-house or a freelancer or whatever i'm like you have no record of that right. like that's right. just crazy and it's it's the only it's like the only mean uh the only uh business that that seems to happen with because like if it's if it's comics or if it's uh uh, covers for novels or something like that. These people are, they, they have names. They are credited. They are in there. Yep. Imagine not knowing who like yeah. Frank Rosetta is or, you know, right. Basil Gogos or something like, you know, these are like, imagine if nobody knew who those people were. Like, these are like gods to me and like, well, okay, well, who did the ghosts and goblins cover? Like, what the hell, man? Like it's crazy. So, right. anyway, and, we were, you know, at the time too, you know, there, you know, we had albums in the eighties, and you know, yeah, oh yeah, and CDs yet, you know. So you still still had album art, which was just amazing. Yeah. You know, some of the album art that that was part of the problem. But once once it became CDs, and the art went from here to here, you yeah. know, and then, and then CDs are gone, and now you just everything's on a you know yeah. a jump drive. Oh, where's the art? Yeah. Yeah. Just, what the hell? I know. You know it's, it's like I, looking at yeah, movie yeah. posters. They're all they're all photo composites. Know, it. We appreciate no artwork it. anymore. Uh, it's it's awesome. Yeah. 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 I I definitely I'm glad that that bands are still making really detailed uh, album artworks now, even though it's not necessary as much. Right. You have so much digitalization, but mm-hmm. I am really glad to see you know a lot of bands still putting that time and effort into <clears throat> having you know detailed artwork. Like Testament comes to mind, and mm-hmm. I mean there's 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 really a lot of um, bands. Actually, Tear is another one where like you look at this artwork and I'm like, oh my god, I could stare at this for hours. There's so much detail. But like you said you know, you're not having a vinyl in front of you with like this huge, you know, bifold well, and all this stuff. Now that kind of is, is a thing again, which it's is coming not, back. It's yeah. coming back. It's, coming which back, is cool. yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Everything, everything comes back. Huh? Except yep. day tracks. Yeah. Yep, yeah, 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 no, no, one wants no one's A-track. bringing those back. <laughs> and laser discs. Get rid of those. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And uh, disco. <laughs> disco also. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Thank you know, uh, the eight, the eight track, I, I don't know, I, I know all this useless Jeopardy information, my wife calls sure. it Jeopardy information. <laughs> it's going to be great if you're ever on Jeopardy, you know. Right. Anyway, the, uh, the eight track was developed by the guy that that that, it, um, that designed the Lear Jet. Whoa. Uh, yeah, uh, um, I don't know how I know this, but as a side project, as a distraction from... <laughs> Designing the Learjet, he invented a track. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Wow. You know who That's invented just... liquid paper? Mike Nesmith's mother. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> From the monkeys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Jeopardy information. Damn it, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> got, I got a whole treasure trove up here. Yeah, uh, little did we know that, on, you know, uh, the, the ski cap wearing dude was actually sitting on the, the liquid paper fortune the whole time. We had no right? idea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about what you've been doing lately like let's, let's talk about like your your haunted house uh thing that yeah, you had abyss. going on the uh, abyss yeah okay um 
so, somewhere, <clears throat> I always had a, a, a love for, you know, horror and haunted houses. And like I said, I grew mm. up on a, on a farm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we, we used to make a haunted barn. We used to haunt, haunt our barn. And, you know, I'd bring my friends over and, you know. I remember doing goofy stuff like, uh, you know, we'd have a trouble light up in the rafters and we're like, you know, goofing with the connection and we'd have a, a, you know, a sheet of uh, aluminum that we'd rattle and that was thunder lightning, you know? <laughs> sure. Right. You know, it was great fun. So, yeah, just, just kind of took that um, <laughs> about a hundred steps farther <laughs> and made this, you know, a haunted house. So, so yeah, I always kind of wanted to do that, and I did that in 2006, and I uh, ran it from 2006 to 2014. Wow. And uh, um, it was yeah, it was a great show. We had about maybe 60 cast members. Uh, um, wow! Yeah, it was, it was a big show. That's a production. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Um, it's here in Chicago, uh, it's where there are more haunted houses per capita than any other place in the universe. Wow. Uh, I don't know why, but there are. And, and so I had no idea. Is, yeah, competition is super tough, super stiff. Um, it, it, and so it bumps up the level of the game, uh, of everybody's game. So, hmm. I mean, I was always proud of the show. We were always in the top 10 rated shows in Illinois. That's, some, that's saying something. Yeah, yeah definitely. Especially so, if you got so much, so much competition. Hold yeah, right. so, so I'm, wearing, I'm wearing my Abyss shirt. Here, I'll show you it's awesome. The abyss fits. right. So, yeah, we, we, we always laugh that you know a lot of the uh, a lot of cast members from the haunted house uh, industry kind of, they always feel a little little mis misfitting, you know. Mm -hmm. They're just never finding their place, and, and the haunted house is their place, you know. So we were laughing about, and like you were saying before about you know uh, being the, the misfit, the island of misfit toys. And right. I said, well, right. And, and somebody said, "Well, we're kind of a bisfits." I went, "That's just clunky enough to be good." <laughs> That's right. that could go on a t-shirt. That right. could go on a t-shirt. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it is on a t-shirt. Hey, it is. <laughs> so I made this t-shirt. Nice. Yeah. So we had some great fun with it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's funny because uh, uh, the the Abyss Fit Minions, they call themselves. And they were they were minions long before the, the uh, Despicable, Despicable Me. Despicable Me. Yeah. 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 I, was, I was first. You know, the minions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a great show. We had a lot of fun. Um, unfortunately, the uh, uh, Life Safety Act uh, came along. It doesn't sound like something you'd say, unfortunately, too. But, you know. Um, right. It demanded, well, every state could, could make their own interpretation. And Illinois decided that you had to have a sprinkler system in your haunted house in order to be open. And that was, that was game over. You know, we, we were in a pole barn out on a farm. Uh, that was a, uh, it was a fall fest. We didn't even have running water in the building, much less, you know, put together a sprinkler, sprinkler system. system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The building cost us 105000 to build. The sprinkler system quote that I got was one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. That was the cheapest. Oh one. crap! Wow. Yeah, it was more than the cost of the building. Oh, right. God. Yeah, you know, and, and that required to have four tanks, um, ten feet in diameter and thirteen feet tall, four of them, as a re as a water reserve, which meant that that water had to be dumped at the end of every season too. Oh, oh wow! And then the whole system had to be purged. Oh yeah, it was just a nightmare. I was like, eh, game over. Yeah, forget yeah. it. We had a good run. We had a good run. Right? Good run, <laughs> just, yeah. Just, yeah. Eight Damn, years. Good run, baby. Damn good you know? run. Yeah. So it is what it is. That's fine. So mm -hmm. anyway, because of it, um, you know, I, I learned how to build my own props, and uh, at the end of it all, I ended up in the prop business. So but nice. now. I, yeah, so so now I make uh, like really huge props for uh, well, pumpkin fests and uh, um, theme parks, water parks, haunted houses, escape rooms, you name nice. it. Nice. Uh, a couple, yeah, a couple years ago, got to go to Lyon, France, and uh, build a uh, um, uh, an escape room that I had designed. Wow, so, yeah. that, that's awesome! I'm such yeah, a huge awesome. fan of escape rooms. I would kill to go to that. <laughs> that would be. Yeah, I, I, uh, um, I made one that was a. Uh, uh, the front of a pyramid. We did this huge front of a pyramid thing. And uh, um, 
in the hieroglyphics we hid like little alien stuff you know because that, nice. that, that was a yeah that was a theme of the you know nice. that, that the, the aliens had actually you know uh, built, built the, the pyramids Egyptians, or whatever yeah you know? and on the, and then that was in maui that went that went to a you know, escape room in maui so you know stuff's all over the place it was, it was nice. pretty cool I, um I, I painted the uh the giant uh zombie head that is the entranceway to the zombie ride at Coney Island. Um, oh, wow. I haven't yeah. seen that. Yeah, yeah uh, that's the, so that was kind of funny, too. It's like, like uh, I, I mean, I got lucky uh, again. Uh, I decided to be in the prop business. All of a sudden, I'm working on you know, world-class stuff. I mean, um, I, I helped build uh, uh, the sarcophagus, uh, Merlin's sarcophagus in the last Transformers movie. Oh, um, oh, the last night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 Merlin's sarcophagus. That's that's in in the movie. Oh, okay. Um, has little skulls of the Nile. You know, yeah. I, I helped build that. Um, oh, that's that awesome. Was, uh, yeah. I'm looking at the uh, zombie in in Coney Island. That is a hell of a big zombie head. It's yeah, two, that thing it's is two thick. stories tall. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> it's two stories tall. Yeah. And so you <laughs> you fabricated that and painted it. No. No. no, I just painted it. Okay, that was that was actually done at a, a shop called uh, Legacy 3D here in Chicago. And, really uh, cool. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and it, it it actually has a metal um, framework inside of it, uh, just just for support. The foam's tough stuff. Foam's the foam's amazing. Uh, yeah. It's pretty crazy material. I love working in foam. It's super I light. I saw Wait. a picture of you. Uh, you posted. Uh, you're you're hacking away. You're actually sculpting with a chainsaw. Right. I I use like a little ch trimming chain. Um, that was a um the clown doorway, huge clown doorway, and uh, yeah, I do most of the sculpting with a chainsaw first. You know, to get get it down, whittle it down to you know workable size, and then a rasping tool, and then at the end you're just using little little rasping tools and sandpaper and shit you know it's fun i like it. Cool. <laughs> yeah nice. well you know you've had a hell of a career in the arts doing like just about every Everything. possible thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. back of all trades yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and, and it's funny because everybody when they look at that and they hear about it and they go wow you know that you just bounced around like, like i'm this free spirit that's bouncing from job to job and, you know, don't bother me with that i'm i'm off to do this now if yeah like as if i mean maybe when i toured all those ski resorts but like that, that's, uh, that's that was that was a long time ago brother yeah you know? no not no it's it's all like you know you got work what is it have you ever done this before uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Guy. All right, real, real quick story. Uh, in 2007, um, was, uh, I, one of the agencies I, I had worked for for a long time uh, closed its doors, and all of a sudden, you know, I had no work. And I mean, it, it was pretty dire for a while there. And uh, but I had a brother-in-law that had a window company. He was teaching me. You know how to be a window salesman. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, wow. well, I think I'll sell uh, my first set of windows, and then I'll go up to the car and I will blow my brains out. Oh you know? my God. <laughs> so, yeah, this is what it's turned into. No offense and, to all the window salesmen listening to the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't love you as much as the nurses, but you're great. <laughs> Here's the thing I'm not a window salesman. That was the point. It was just that, you know, it was so not me right. but, I, but i so appreciated him giving giving me a shot and, and you know i mean he didn't have to uh, he, right you know, he, he took me on, brought me in so i remember one day um and we had these sessions with the other salesmen and i'm writing notes and they're telling me oh, how to be a salesman and uh we went to lunch and i got this text from from the art director that i used to work with at, at the old agency she says, yeah she's at a new agency and the, the text was uh, um can you do event rendering? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. I had no idea what event rendering was. <laughs> You're like furiously you know, Googling, like, what the hell is it. this? Right, right. You know, right. I had no idea what it was, but I'm not turning it down. I got to get the hell out of here. I'll blow my brains out. You know? 
So I see, oh, great, be here at 9 o'clock. I mean, I remember walk, walking back from lunch and going, see ya. <laughs> Thanks, bye. <laughs> Out the door I went. <laughs> you know? And my brother-in-law, it was funny, you know, uh, late, later. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of funny because I, I just kind of left and never shut up. <laughs> you know? and it was never, nothing was ever really spoken or said about it. Yeah. And, and later on at a family gathering, he says, how did all that work out? I'm like, oh, yeah, pretty good. I got, you know, got a whole new career going, actually. As a vet, vet runner, I really, it totally turned into a whole new career. I ended up you know, making a lot of money doing that. <laughs> wow. And, and yeah, and it started, started a whole new thing. Um, nice. Oh, I worked so, for. Uh, so the moral of the story like, is when. So the moral of the story is when an interdimensional being comes and asks you if you are a god, you say. <laughs> Yes. 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 Say yes. 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 Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How fast can a sparrow swallow? Or <laughs> swallow the, yeah, swallow. Yeah, the Af- African or your beer yeah, yeah, swallow. Exactly. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's talk about. I know, I know uh, Tim really wants to get into this. Let's talk about the pop cap. Yeah, we should probably end with this. Sure. Yeah, we should end yeah. with this for sure. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. 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 We're entering like uh, hour two, I think, at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, my, yeah my, my nine o'clock alarm just went off. So. <laughs> I know, it's like, sorry, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, I guess the, the, the middle ages here are kind of what I was looking to talk about a little bit. But yeah, so we have, you know, the pop cap time. I know you spent a couple of years doing some freelance for them. And you, you had a lot of work that you did with Peggle. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that was, that was so crazy. Um, <clears throat> and that happened the same time, like, well, the exact same time that uh, the, the uh, event rendering started. Right, you mentioned 2007, right? So that's right, great. right. That's it was exactly, time. yeah. That was exactly at the, the exactly the same time. All of that, all of a feast of famine. That is my entire career. It's a feast <laughs> of famine. You know, suddenly I'm just bogged down with more words than I know what to do with. And uh, and it's it's cool because um, now they're in Seattle, and you know I'm just talking to them on the phone. And quite honestly, most of my clients I have never met. Most of them I've never even spoken to on the phone. Half the time I, I get emails from them and you know they're oh I spent one summer working for a Chinese company where uh, I they would send me everything they needed in the morning and that would be the end of their day and I'd work on it all day long and then I'd send it to them and they'd have it for their morning meeting. They, I was like their in-house artist on the other side of the planet. Wow. But, and wow. when I got yeah, I never spoke to them. Just emails, a little broken English sometimes, but you know, we, we got we got through it. Made it happen. <clears throat> and uh, and my and my checks from them would show up U- UPS, and it would be all Chinese except for my name and the amount. That would be the only English on it, and it could be cash just. All you fine. need. Yeah, wow, it cash just need. fine, huh? That's cash just fine. Yeah. That was best. That, actually, that was a great gig. I spent an entire summer. It was like I'd get up in the morning and let's see what what adventure awaits me today in right. you know, Chinese nice. graphics. So awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it's funny. You, know? um, you you roll with the punches. You kind of you know evolve with how the business evolves. Back yeah. in the day, if you wanted to get more work, you know, I'd call people up and go, "Let's go to lunch," and you'd take them to lunch and. You'd spend some money on them, and, and then they, you know, two days later, they'd call you up with some big fat job for Kellogg's. Okay. <laughs> and that's Can't how, turn that down. It, right. right. And that's how, and that's how it used to be. But then people start, they don't go to lunch. And then, you know, um, they work with you online. They don't even, you know, they don't even want you to come into the office. It's, it's just more, you know, they have to provide a space for you now, and then there's liability, and maybe you have to computer ass, or pain in the ass, you know. just work at home right i haven't gone into a studio i mean not mine years and years and years i can't remember the last time i did actually wow. just everything's online i you know very rarely do i even you know uh, met the clients i work for 
Right. So. Yeah. So, so when you were working, um, doing stuff with PopCap, you said they were in Seattle. So like, that was just right. kind of like a, you know, couple of years kind of gig back and forth sort of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you mentioned going back and forth on the, the cover artwork of, of oh, Piggle yeah. that we had talked Piggle. previously. <laughs> so there was what, just like 20 different sketches of a, a marble More. and tiles and. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. The, I think I sent you a dozen. Okay. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And it, yeah, it even doesn't. And and those were the the base twelve. And <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure I made at least two or three changed versions on each one of those. Wow. So, yeah, so so it seems to me there were like twenty seven or twenty eight, you know, sketches, full sketches of the cover of the you know, that they were just developing ideas, working through, mm-hmm. and I, I thought, okay, now that I'm seeing this, in fact, uh, while I was doing it, I, I found, uh, what was it, Paul Wong was, was the art director that I was working for, and uh, um, uh, I still have her, her art directions on, on a lot of the, you know, the, the sketches, you know, make the rainbow bigger, make the thing, or whatever, you know, blah, 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 whatever, yeah. you know, right, all yeah. around little arrows pointing to everything, and that was, you know, then I'd make those changes and send it back, and then we'd go back and forth, and, you know, and, and that was one of those jobs where it started out one way, and then it, it evolved, and all these different things, and then so coming back, and they go, let's go look at that first thing again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, maybe that wasn't so bad, maybe that... So- it's just so funny to me because okay so for those who don't know this game is called peggle because i think we kind of said it but it was kind of like like so it's peggle by popcap came out in like 2007 or something Mm -hmm. it is just like a a, i i used to play this game all the time i love this game um me and my wife used to play this all the time and uh it's just basically this ball and it bounces down between these pegs and on the cover and all these versions that you sent me they're all basically a bouncing ball. So it's like, I don't know. Do it's, come, so, it's so funny. How do you come up with, yeah, right. How do you come up with 12? No, okay, so not only that, but like the embarrassment of riches that must exist for the, the person who's the art director on that job to just keep ordering new versions when any of them would be perfectly fine. Like, they're all good. They're all completely good. It's so funny. Like, thanks, thanks. It's not like you know you're working with you know trying to get a character or a, a, a yeah. It's a concept you're conveying, and then there's like a few characters you, you have know, to graphics. come up with or whatever. Oh yeah, Joe's got Peggle right there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Right. It's a fun game. It really is. It's great. But it's pretty you know, addicting. It's it's, it's, so it's a simple fun. game, but it's very addicting. It is. It is. And I remember there was a sequel, Peggle Knights, and I yeah. played through the first two. Like like I was super addicted back in the day. Yeah. You know, I mean, that model, it, it was genius. You know, it was just, it was just so simple. That, here was a, their, their model for, for building games was to attract um, the housewife who had five to ten minutes to play a game in the car while she was waiting for the kids to come out of school. Right. That was, that was their model. And so they and developed it, games that you could play like that for five right. minutes and then set aside and it didn't matter. It wasn't like an ongoing thing. It didn't matter. And at the beginning, they were all so those were those Brilliant. were like always in Walmart and Target, and they were always yeah. like always books. in the computer game really section. Cheap. Yep, yeah, they were always super super cheap, and you could, that's where, where we actually got them. We got them for the PC, but um, I mean they were like ten dollar games. So it's mm-hmm. like, oh, what mm-hmm. do they got now? And then we realized we liked PopCap, and it's like, okay, well, let's see what else they have. You know, whatever. Eventually, we found. You know, Plants vs. Zombies hit around that time, and they became huge, I think, because of that. Right. And then uh, yeah. Peggle was, like, the next one that we had loved. But, and Bejeweled was, was, I think, their first Right, one. and, and, I, and I did the on. cover art on uh, Bejeweled, too. Yeah. Okay. So Bejeweled, I think, was probably their first big hit. Yeah, yeah. it was a big, yeah, big yeah. first hit, for Definitely. sure. Yeah. It was, a, it was a great little company. Um, oh, I don't know. Whole, it, was, yeah, it was really a great idea. Um, the, the whole, everything, their whole, their whole business model, everything. You know, and it was worth fun working for them. They, they, you know, and, and nice thing too is they had money. Right, know. right. They had done well in the past, so they were they yeah, were they able to play out, money. and they had a lot of games going on at the same time too. A yeah. lot of oh, you know. Okay, I found the invoice. A lot like all, with all those sketches. Yep. And it was like just shy of five grand. <laughs> to draw a bunch of marbles, a like a bunch of silver balls around bouncing and, around. Yeah. <laughs> 
They didn't care. Oh my god. They yeah, they didn't care. care. They're just like, let's wow. do it. Let's that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. so funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Those days um, are so gone. Shit. Even you know, that was only that was two thousand seven. That wasn't that long ago, really. I know. Thirteen picture. years ago. Yeah. yeah, you were doing uh you were doing Abyss, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Starting yeah, in 2006, at, you at said. The, yeah. At the same time, yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because uh, that was that was also in 2006. We we had well, it was kind of a one and done. The the, the space we were in, uh, we got kicked out of. That's a that's a long story, but I need a drink in front of you so tell I'll tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have time for a long. I don't story have time either. for that now. Uh, that, yeah, right? no, honestly. <laughs> um, so, uh, but. It, uh, if there is uh if there's one thing I could I, I would wanna bend your ear on for a second. Uh the only only kind of thing we didn't get to touch on is uh your time at Eagle Games and uh when you worked as like a kind of illustrative creative director doing a lot of like historical things, a lot of historical games, specifically Age of Mythology called out to me. I just kinda oh, wanna yeah. hear a little I want to hear a little bit about your time with them because I I loved Age of Mythology and I want to know like kind of how your role was because it seemed like you played a pretty big part in that company for, yeah, for the well time. I was a, I was one of the owners okay yeah yeah so I was a, so, I, well, I was a partner I was a, I, you know I was a partner in the, in the company wow so yeah so um yeah yeah we developed okay this, this uh, map behind me is the Civil War map that, that's one big painting actually back when I was you know <laughs> actually still doing paintings you know yeah actual right, paintings right with real paint you know, yeah. Without, without, yeah and i finally got i broke down and i got on the computer in 2004 uh, and um yeah I, I had it was it got to a point where i had to be competitive and if i wasn't if i was not on a computer it was, it was just going to be lost in the dust and i had so many friends so many talented talented people that um they just didn't quite make the transition to computers or maybe they waited too long before they made the transition to computers and they and their business just went to hell mm. and, and it was so sad to see these really super talented guys and you know they're they're, they're scrapping for their work business changed dramatically mm. dramatically right yeah it's what it is <laughs> but you gotta roll the changes so what um, happened with eagle games um Boy, <laughs> we, had a, we had this awesome poker game that, that um, this guy had developed, and uh, it was our cash cow. We we're making a ton of money off of it, so that was that was great because we were like, you know, the pressure's not even on for these other games to, you know, make it big and, and support the company. The company's being supported by this poker game. That's Awesome. So that left us plenty of opportunity to do whatever we wanted with other games, which was great. Bumped up the production value, time to do it. And um, what happened was another company came along and talked to the guy that developed that game and figured out um, a rather nasty plan to break his contract with us and steal him away from us. Wow. Wow. that's what happened that's and, uh, the whole, yeah and then uh, the whole yeah, the whole company kind of kind of crumbled around that and uh, and actually um we had approached him <clears throat> he lived out in colorado we flew out to colorado to have a, a you know an eye to eye talk with him you know sat down at the table and said look we get it you know they're offering you more money than us why don't we, we, we just want to walk out the year, okay? Everybody, everybody takes their profit and, and then we just cut you loose, okay? And, and you, you can do whatever you want, but you, you know, you, you're developing the second game for us and, and we want to release that and, and, and we'll all make money off of it. You know, your contract will be good and then you can go and do what you want at the end of the year. And he wouldn't go for it. Oh, wow. And, and, wow. and we were like, okay, here's the thing. You know, we had, we had an ace up our sleeve. Uh, his his lawyer had sent uh, paperwork to us in the wrong order, and and uh, you know, so they had to go all the way to the beginning and and start all over again, which gave us you know a heads up. So now now we approached the whole situation in a completely different way and kind of you know had him off in the past a little bit on that. So we had that ace up our sleeve and we played it and thought, okay, certainly he's you know he would see the logic in this that we're going to, not only is this going to destroy us but it's going to destroy him too and we will make sure that it does 
You know, we, you know, our boat goes down. We're chaining ours to your boat, and we're both going down. <laughs> right. The idiot would not go for it. Mm. And that's exactly wow. what happened. Both that's boats went down. They went yeah. down hard. Wow. And, he, and he ended up filing bankruptcy, and so did Eagle Games. And I think Griffin Games came along and, and bought us up, and now it's Eagle Griffin Games. Wow. Yeah. And I did some work, a little bit of work for, for uh, Griffin afterwards. You know, um, I, I, I and uh, uh, the guy I work with at Eagle Games, I'm not going to say his name, but, you know, we are terrible enemies now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, we are mortal. That's too bad. We are mortal enemies now. Um, you, you finally found your '80s ski asshole. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Is he blonde. Yeah. I bet he's blonde, isn't he? He's blonde. No, he's, no, he's balding. Oh. He <laughs> he's blonde, blonde. He's blonde, blonde and balding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I choose to believe that he's blonde and he has flowing locks. In, <laughs> in my imagination. Well, in his dreams, he is. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> Little baby. <laughs> you're knocked down the shine, you're scaring the kids. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> all right i yeah. think that, that wow. pretty much uh wraps up this yeah, episode so. yeah. wow it's pretty pretty long episode huh yeah, was, <laughs> i know yeah. um, well you're a fantastic yeah. guest paul i mean oh, it's so much yeah. fun to talk to you and hear all your stories yeah it was, it was a lot yeah. of fun it was, yeah right. no, that's it's awesome. an interesting that's... adventure that's for sure Thank i I, I, I have to say that. i i mean i know this was already brought up, but i'm just really amazed and really happy that you decided to keep all of that artwork yeah yeah, I mean, that's me that's too. just amazing. That's just amazing to me. My, my wife has gotten on my case about being a pack rat all these years. I don't hear a word anymore. It's beautiful. No, that's the <laughs> stuff you got to hang on to. No one else is gonna, oh, and that's no. just yeah. years ago. Priceless Parasite, now. Parasite Steve and I just used to. More shit uh, my wife. <laughs> years ago, Parasite Steve and I used to draw a lot together, mm -hmm. and I kept everything <laughs> from like stuff we did from like the late '80s through the '90s and. I have everything packed up, and it's, just, it's stuff that, that I, yeah, I, you can't, go back. I can't get rid of. Like sometimes I'll, I'll like find it and look through, like, oh wow, this is terrible. But yeah, but hey, keep on. Memories, I still got it. I still mm -hmm. have it. It's like it's, it just means so much to me. Like money can't buy that. So yeah, I well, you know, not every artist. Okay, everybody, you know, you have a couple clunkers. <laughs> you know? Of course, of course, yeah. You know, I saved them. You know, when I was digging through the stuff, I'm like, ooh, what was I thinking? <laughs> right. First of all, I would never show this to anybody. Why did I keep it? <laughs> what was the logic? I don't Because and, you and, knew. And never go back to that dark place again. And, and yet, and yet, what did I do? I put it right back in the drawer. <laughs> See, I, I, I know why you, why you tried to keep it, because you knew that you were going to be on our show. <laughs> so you can show up. Have, have that story. Sometime, <laughs> good. Yeah, I can go throw it all out. Future, a bunch yeah, of I'll go down there and throw all that crap out. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I, honestly, like see, it's seeing the uh, the Midnight Marauders stuff too. Like, I would have loved to have seen the side art. If you can find it and take a picture with your phone or something, send it to us. Like, oh man, I'd love to see. Yeah. That. Oh, absolutely. Awesome uh, uh, actually, I've got a blueprint. Uh, we, we did all of those. Um, Oh, don't think you can wait just a second. It's across the room, actually. Sure. Uh, it, we did all the artwork on the size of the cabinets at half size. Oh. Mainly because it was just the size. You know, just dealing with the size it was just just a you know huge pain in the ass. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So you'd work at half size, but that also meant you had to be you had to work really super clean and tight because you're blowing it up twice yeah, that size. Yeah. So. So, um, so when I had the black line done, we had a, a blueprint machine, and just just to have a copy of it, we would run them through. So I actually have a blueprint, half size, of the side art of Midnight Marauders on the other side of the room. Can I go get it? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> I see something vaguely blueprint shaped. <laughs> Crazy, huh? All right. That doesn't look like a sausage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. That wow, is Oh, awesome. that's so wow. cool. Look at that. Oh, man. That is just so cool. That is so cool. 
I love but, it. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And I, so I actually awesome. signed it and gave it to a friend of mine. Unfortunately, uh, he died in a car accident. Oh, wow. Oh. Sister gave this back to me at his funeral. Very sorry to hear that. That's a uh, long, long time ago, like 25 years ago. Thank All right, you guys Joe, you so much it? for watching, listening, whatever you're, you're listening or watching from. Uh, I am your host, Nintendo, and I want to thank Parasite Steve, Apid Alchemy, and of course, our very, very special guest, Paul, on the show. And uh, thank you guys so much again for watching. And that is a cool toy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the Metaluda Mutant. It is. Yes, oh, that is awesome. Yes. Nice. Oh, I'm the 50s movie monster guy. Yes, he is. <laughs> it's true. Me. It's true. He Hell is. yeah. Are you surprised? Come on. Or does this guy too? <laughs> nice oh my god <laughs> this is playing better on the nintendo version of this episode yes yes Th this could be the blooper part yeah we can we can, we can edit the audio i don't know yeah, yeah don't try this at home kids right <laughs>